It is Thursday, September 8th, 2016. What do, it's a we, new era. Why don't we like? Do we do we ever do that? Like we we've never done like we we never start with a date. I'm do pretty we? sure that was the first what time. Is this we, morning we, radio? Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> this is a new era of F1, though. It's important to mark this date. It is really Tuesday's date, I guess. Sh- but well, you're right, right. right. <laughs> but <laughs> it's more se- important se- because se- we're talking about it September now. 2016. Harken, harken all around. <laughs> 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 this represents a massive shift of tectonic proportions that's happened to f1 welcome to crazy the, welcome to the flat of fever f1 podcast if you're tuning in right now expecting to like hear something about like uh you know the recap of the monza race or something like that you like you, 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 come back for the second half yeah yeah come back a, for the second half we're doing a two-parter today i think jesus like it, it, who knows who knows how how long in the future we're going to talk about monza we we got some stuff to talk about first boys javier michael and daniel here hey guys the flat of fever podcast flat of fever.com twitter all that stuff no, let's get right As to always. it, man. Yeah, yeah, F1 yeah. just got sold. We're not important today. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Just, just so, just so everybody knows. Not as important. Right now, what we're doing is we're getting right to it. There, the sale of F1 finally happened. We've been calling it for so long. We didn't actually. I, I've got. I've got to be honest with you guys. I didn't think that it was gonna happen. Like, I didn't believe it. I didn't think. Yeah, I thought it's Bernie so was gonna die, and then F1 was gonna go into like a year of hell, like, like limbo who, or some yeah, shit. People fighting over. <laughs> Delta Topco and the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Bernie Ecclestone and it's the all Family all Wealth, happening. The family wealth Fund. Oh my God! It's all happening, guys, and it's and and, and it's happening today. I mean, so this thing is not uh, apparently ha- half the money already went through on Tuesday. Yeah, and well, but he, <laughs> what he, really? A whole oh tr- a whole tranche, as the media <laughs> keeps using this word tranche, a, a tranche of half of the cash, the first payment. The wheels are in motion. Like yeah. we're gonna ah, talk, we're gonna talk about the conditions of the second tranche going through because it's a, a bit crazy as everything in the F one happens to be. Yeah, some people still are, are out there still claiming that oh, but they haven't included all the players just because the FIA has come out and said that they they weren't included in any of the negotiations. Yeah, and maybe they should have been because they they're still holding on to one percent of Delta Topco. Fuck you, John Todd. Yeah, I'm still holding on to those egos. Yeah, come on, C- come on, guys. This is huge. I, I, I ho- yeah. it's huge. We've been saying, okay, we've been saying this for how long now? Like S- episode basi- one. Yeah, basically episode we- minus two or three. Yeah, we did some yeah. secret practice episodes. That the- nobody will ever hear. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this. Yeah. We talked about we've been talking about the sale of F one since we've been friends and watching F one together. We we knew that this was this this moment was gonna come. Something that's true. Of of you know something was gonna happen of seismic proportions Mm. in the F one world because it it has to man it has to because things cannot um how do I how do I put this unsustainability is not a sustainable condition ah right beautifully. Yeah, beautifully mm. said. Yeah, I so like that. so uh, the, the the permanent spiral and sucking of money and decreasing of value and shitting in the in the fans' faces that F one was doing yeah. was not sustainable. Bernard. So this this was this was gonna happen. The sale oh, of F one, CVC, a, a, a parasite can only extract as much <laughs> blood as the host has. Oh, right. <laughs> that's why there's a mosquito on there. <laughs> no, or no, it's actually not, but that's oh. that's a good double oh, analogy. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's what the mosquitoes were for now. So yeah. you, you can Unless only come for the second half. You can only bleed an acid so much, and people like it was starting. It's starting. It was starting to the point where like fucking like people like us were like ready to take up pitchforks and be like, yo, show me, like show who do I need to fight? Yeah. To make. To Wait, make isn't sure. that why we started the podcast? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're here right now. <laughs> It finally happened. We're gonna get 
like you, I have been waiting all day to talk about this shit. <laughs> talk about, we've been, we've had off camera, we've had to stop ourselves from getting into too much detail about this. Cause yeah, we, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. Listen, there's too much going on and we hope we're going to like break it down for you guys right now. So F1 sort of, I mean, th this is a, an ongoing process as anything that's worth over a billion dollars. It takes some time because you can't like nobody has a suitcase full of a billion or, you know, however many billion dollars. Danny, you, 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 you keep in track of the actual money figures, but um, 8.5 U.S. billions. So you know, About eight, eight billion U uh, Australian dollars. It's, Mad it, Max money. It doesn't. It doesn't translate like that, right? Like, no, it's it's not gonna be like just like cash money or like fucking ingots of gold or anything. Like, no, there, it's there's, like there's assets a, and shit. Yeah, like that. all kinds of like gotta liquidize that money moving here and there and stocks and what. Liberty Group, the 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 new owners of. Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, how do we take this from the beginning? Right now. F1. Uh, okay, so what is in you know up for sale is basically the controlling stake, a controlling stake on the company, and that company's this company called Delta Topco. Its only function is to own a bunch of other companies that together form the framework of the. Uh, digital or sorry not digital the commercial distribution of f1 it's more it's it's a lot i'd be simplifying it by by calling it the formula one group but let's call it the formula one group of companies now okay you can't own a sport in the same way that you can't own uh fucking track and field but right. what you can own, or you can just own all the tracks and fields. Right? Yeah, no, you can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 you, you know what I mean. Yes, but you but you can't own like human endeavor, right? right. Okay. But right. so so you know owning Formula One, like owning auto racing, it's it's a bit of a weird uh, concept. But no, in real terms, what we're talking about here is we're talking about the the, the, the bureaucracy rights. and the commer and the commercial no specifically the company that controls the commercial rights. Oh, right? shit. Okay. Which is, in like, and this has many, many, many layers, and we'll, I'm sure we'll, we have gotten into this before, and we will get into this in the future. Uh, but it all comes down to that one company, Delta Topco, which is, like, Bernie's, like, B Bernie set this up a long time ago, and it's the company that, like, all of the F1 business eventually, like, filters to, and... Uh, thirty-five to thirty-nine percent. Do you have like the the exact the exact number? Delta Topco, I believe, is eight percent of the total. No, 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 no. Uh, CVC, uh, the, the previous owners of F1, own thirty-nine percent or something like that, of the which is a, a controlling stake, a, a decision-making stake. With that much, mm. with that many shares, you can like enforce shit to happen. Right. This is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so they own that and they were looking to sell for a long time before what they wanted to do uh, is to sell it at the Singapore Stock Exchange to do what uh, what uh, financiers called an IPO. Float. Yeah. So, float it. Yeah. To float it in an IPO as in put it in the market. Like, we talked about it. this with Ferrari earlier in the year. Yeah. Ferrari is a publicly owned company now. Stock ticker uh, 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 RACE. Uh, uh, yeah, it used to be, but now like it's different. It's a different company than it used to be. Before. Anyway, yeah, mm. there's a public company though. That's what yeah. they attempted to do a couple of years ago, 2008 With, around 2008. What didn't work and conditions weren't favorable because all of a sudden, you know, the fucking world economy crashed. In two, yeah, 2008, the world economy went to yeah. shit. Nobody had money to speculate on F1. CBC <laughs> was in it actually kind of for the short term like in a weird way they were sort of in it to like kind of like all right we're moving in here we'll fucking dress it up like this da -da -da. Mm -hmm. and then in 2008 we'll float it somewhere make cash money man but <laughs> but because that, that that's what cvc was and C cvc is a company that not a lot of people like know about or know what they do because what they do is simply that just they just they they have like a ton of money and they're ready to like invest here invest there for like a little bit, da -da -da, you know, like just gamble. So they're like, okay, yeah. th this company looks like, you know, if we get in there and like change this and change that about it, it will like make nice and we can sell it for this much. And mm -hmm. we're talking about big money. That's like, so uh, only okay. people that are like in like finance and whatever, like really know or care about that activity mm. to you, to me, the, to the consumer, people like hardly ever hear about these 
venture capitalists no. in day to day because there's nothing that they that this company the CVC does like they don't produce anything right, right they don't yeah. actually like give you any service or anything they barely exist right it's just a, yeah it's just like an office somewhere in London yeah like with a bunch of computers and people like fucking dressing what if it's a bunch of computers to running computers it. right exactly could be <laughs> <laughs> up until the sale CVC held 35 and a half percent there you go that's what I did. somewhere in between like yeah, yeah it's okay so 35 which is a controlling stake with that much they originally purchased though um I believe a 48 percent share in 2005 november 2005 but they sold a little bit to a few other Waddell and reed blackrock and norges bank which is the Norgas. norwegian sovereign wealth fund yeah so the country of norway owns a 78 percent of formula one tiny bit but that's that's not <laughs> enough to make a decision right no no those are you you're sitting there like <laughs> and the thing with the, Delta, the as we were just talking about delta topco mm -hmm. there's some kind of crazy agreement as everything with bernie is some kind of crazy agreement that those Delta Topco shareholders have the voting rights that essentially, even with only 8% ownership of the whole of Formula One, has some inordinate amount of control over the decisions of of the whole racing series. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. So, scale that to what happened recently and what's, and what's going on right now. So, like Tuesday? CVC couldn't sell... F1 back in, in 2008 because the world was shit and nobody was investing in anything. Mm. They could so have they, sold it, but they decided not to. No, they decided time. not to because... They, <laughs> because no, yeah, no. They if, could have hold it on that and make more money. If your job is to make, like, like you know, to take a pile of, pile of money and turn it into, like, a substantially a bigger of money? pile of money, mm. yeah, into, yeah, into a mountain of money... The ones with the if dragons you just, on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you just <laughs> take size. that little pile of money and turn it into a slightly bigger pile of money... Mm everybody's going to think that you're not good at your job because you're not turning it into a mountain of money. Right. Right. So selling F1 at that point would have been this, like would, would have just kind of like looked weird in the portfolio. Like, mm. you know, questions would have been raised. Like, so why did you sell it? Because so for that alone, what they decided to do since then, since 2008, is basically being like a fucking, so if you can't sell the asset, bleed the asset. And that means like that it's, it's as fucking, disgusting and predatory as that sounds like literally just try to suck as much life out of this product as you can keep it alive you want to keep it alive you, you want to keep it going Christ. until like maybe there's like a better a bit of time circumstances might change right we might until we figure out what to do with it just try to like suck as the last little scent so Which is how we got here in this podcast, <laughs> and every, all the fans in the world who are still fans, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you probably the, all the fans who aren't fans probably became not fans in the last couple of years since yeah. since, the, since this time we just mentioned. The sport sport has been being bled. It's now sold, and these new guys have to uh, <laughs> call up the blood bank. I guess get a few vials and it, re inject it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But which is no, what they yeah what they've promised to do. But this sell is a commitment, and that is what I think right. that is very very important to know to notice about this sell is that they don't they're not just buying it in the same capacity as CVC bought it to just make a quick buck. You know you know like how real estate agents like sometimes like they'll like see like a house and like they'll buy the house mm. just to, like fucking pay somebody to repaint it and change like, the countertop yeah, and then to, you to make. Like, 30 40 grand in like in a couple of weeks right? yeah so yeah it, it, so <laughs> these people liberty media like the terms and everything about this agreement points in another direction it points as they're not just gonna flip f1 like a cvc was planning to do but right. they eventually didn't because etc etc they're actually like in it for the future and i yes yes they are they have they haven't actually come out and publicly say this but this is where we come in we're gonna oh, connect the they, dots they have publicly said this. This is. Well, I mean, but everybody has. Everybody publicly says that. Everybody no, no, says no. Like, Here, here's their right, cool. five selected um, opportunities that they've observed. What? What's going on? Where's that coming from? Oh my god! Sorry, that was that's my laptop. <laughs> I was Sorry. like, what? That's not. <laughs> Let me meet this. Uh, here we go. Here's the five stated. Ideas. Oh my God! What's going on with this computer? All right. Anyway. Sorry, man. Sorry, I fucked up. Okay. So computers. Liberty Media now has entered into an agreement to buy. It's, it's basically what this means. It's, it they haven't like outright bought the whole chunk or whatever. They just 
agreed on a sum, agreed on the responsibilities of each party, and like with it, like it could take years mm. for like the f- the entirety of the money or shares or whatever uh, financial instruments that they're gonna move around. Okay. But once everybody signs on it, it's done and it's happening, and they can basically start acting as bosses as soon as like tomorrow or something like that. You no, know, like, it's gonna be like the springtime next year. Yeah, I know, but they're gonna start for to, real. to get the gears going and like make make sure that like everything that they would need in place is in place and that then mustache gonna... but dude better put bernie in his place on day one or he's gonna have some fucking problems uh, D, he... let me talk to him about that. let me talk to you about that here we guy. go before we move on it's to like fart. two sith lords like meeting that they're not related to each other or like ha- like they don't share like a padawan <laughs> or like some sort of apprentice and they're just like yeah there's like a stare down there's like nah i'm taking you over i'm gonna be the sith lord wait wait, wait no don't, don't confuse chase carry and jambalone though Oh, okay. Chase carries the mustache. He's the right. new chairman. John Malone's the money man. He's he's the dude with that owns Liberty Media. He's the Sith Lord. He's yes. a Sith he is Lord. Darth, known as Darth Vader in the business world of cable. Of, of cable media. Yeah. Oh my god! In the world of billionaires. <laughs> but sorry, but before you continue and before we pull away from this, yeah. under the heading of opportunity to develop the sport for benefit of all stakeholders, including fans, teams, partners, and shareholders, Liberty Group says that they will. Increase promotion and marketing of F1 as a sport and brand, number one. Number two, enhance distribution of content, especially in digital. Number three, establish broader range of commercial partners, including sponsorship. Number four, evolve the race calendar. And number five, leverage leverage Liberty's expertise in live events and digital monetization. So it's very vague, but they, they have they have stated what they plan to do. Which, and those five things, it should be noted, we've noted this every week since we started this show. Mm. Bernie Ecclestone doesn't even know what those words mean. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't understand. He doesn't uh, understand uh, uh, anything about fans? that. Yeah. What are these? You want to put Formula One on the internet? Oh, no. you mean blood Shut stacks. them down. Shut them down. Shut down their website. <laughs> <laughs> delete it. Delete it from the internet. That's, that's Bernie. I control everything. Yeah, we can hope to see some highlights and stuff on YouTube now. A we'll few see, we'll weeks see. ago, <laughs> we started talking about Liberty Media yeah. because their name started appearing, and we thought that it was uh, it was worth worthwhile mentioning. So we started to like delve into like you know who who are Liberty Me- Media like you know where they come from. You know we talked a couple podcasts ago. We talked about like you know they're you know it's a company that's actually technically based out of London, but they're you know they own like these many like U.S. channels like and and through through their John ownership. John himself is an Australian man. Through, no, no, he's American. Is it? Yeah, oh, okay. from New Hampshire or something. Um, confused with that Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, Mad, Mad Max business. But, <laughs> fucking Road Warrior. Uh, but, ah! <laughs> uh, but but anyway, yeah, so so whatever. We talked about like where media, where Liberty Media comes from in like general terms. But now let's get down to the actual guys because this is very mm. much a tell of like just these these people that are that are way at the top that are going to be making some crazy decisions and some crucial decisions in the future of formula one and i think oh and i want to put it to you guys and You're to everybody out me. there i want to put it to you guys and to everybody out there that that it is actually good or it can be or at least everything points in the right direction in this purchase mm. i'm not worried about this at all i think oh it's, no i think it's great yeah i think it's I think we can agree on that. Yeah. So it is great. Now, so here's what they so here's what they did. So through a combination of like whoever like you know shares or whatever they're buying Formula One, this is actually happening. Uh, and one of the things that they're doing is that they're changing the board by bringing Chase Carey. All right. Okay. Actually, hang on. Before we get it, before we get to that, so CVC finally agreed to sell F1 for like. Danny, you have like the actual numbers. Let me tell you this. Yeah. So yeah. Li- this is, I have open from libertymedia.com, the official press release that they put out. I'm going to read you a little blurb of it. Mm-hmm. It's a little in a business, e- business lilies, but <laughs> it's understandable. Here. This consideration, the consideration in business terms is the consideration is a wad of cash. Uh, the, the consideration is the wad of cash. The consideration comprises cash and newly issued shares in the Liberty Media Group tracking tracking stock, stock LMCK, as oh, shit. and a debt instrument exchangeable into shares of LMCK. Okay, 
The transaction price represents an enterprise value for Formula One of $8 billion and an equity value of $4.4 billion. Concurrent with the execution of the agreement to the effect of the acquisition, Liberty Media has completed... Thank you. Liberty Media has completed the acquisition of an 18.7% minority stake in Formula One on Tuesday for $746 million funded in cash, entirely in cash, which is equal to an $821 million in consideration, less a $75 million discount to be pay, repaid by Liberty Media to selling stockholders upon completion of the acquisition. Prior to completion, CVC funds will continue to be the controlling stakeholder shareholder of Formula One. So don't get that. Don't forget that for the rest of the season and into into the decision making period of next year. CVC is still will be controlling F1 because for now. I, I'm sure we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but yeah. there's all kinds of international law law in the countries that these companies all operate in CVC, Formula One itself. Uh, Liberty Media, they all have to approve it. International law has to approve it. And that debt instrument, the stock has to be approved, first of all, by the shareholders of the Liberty Media Group who are having getting an opportunity to sell before this goes through. It's, it's a crazy deal. They're, oh, they're crazy taking deal. about half of their total controlling stake now mm -hmm. and taking the other half on completion of this deal. Once all the worldwide uh, regulations are worked out, there's so and many deals, and the thing so with, the thing with the international the sports is that right. even if you have an entity that exists in one country, because you have so many stakeholders internationally, there's there's like Swiss law that you have to satisfy, at least like you know, you know French law with like you know, dealings with the FIA, etc. It's, it's a mess. The and, FIA and lawyer, is a lawyer, big like, one. Lawyers are gonna be like you know, there's a team of lawyers out there that's just salivating because they're gonna be making so much money out of like actually working out these deals over the the next you know how how long. We've talked about the European Commission who is yeah. investigating Formula One right now. First of all, another point which is. A conflict of interest is what you already mentioned. The FIA owns a 1% mm -hmm. controlling share of Formula One. But, but you can top. hardly call that a controlling share, that 1%. It's a, yeah, but they have a 1% share that yeah, but they, they can, control, which is... Yeah, they and just, they're already complaining about not being included in these businesses. Abs absolutely. Is a con it is, on the international scale, it's a conflict of interest. It's small, as you said. It's small, but it's there. And it has to be worked out before the rest of this money goes oh, through, yeah. which is... What oh, I, it's so big. So two two things that have been making the rounds, I think, of of, of F one news around, is that um, Bernie is gonna stay on for another three years, at least. At least. For now, yeah. For now, yeah, and that's yeah. As the CEO. Yeah, uh, yeah. So C Bernie will still will still be the CEO of the Formula One Group, or uh, of F O M. And the other thing is that. Now the teams are going to be actually also made shareholders in this, as part of this new new deal, and I think that that is brilliant. Yeah, there's I not going to be any more. The, ha, Mr. Haas, Gene Haas, took a deep breath this morning. That that was probably a political move. Last week we talked about he made a that was a headline. If it's a headline, it's there for a reason. Yeah, he said that. You know, it might have been good for me to buy one of these existing teams and start my own because in the first year, like he has to finish. And if if you finish in eleventh place, as Formula One stands right now, you get zero dollars in prize money. Yeah, you don't get any money. Okay, I, I think this gonna that's something that's gonna change. Oh yeah, under that every team if every team is a shareholder, yeah, yeah. yeah. except that only have makes a sense. reason to show up no, every I mean, week, I mean, every, we, yeah. week, every okay. race. No, no and, team, and a reason and a reason to teams make don't it have to go work. twenty one races this no, year. And a reason to make it work. All right. Now here's. Yeah. Stop arguing I, so much. About I'll definitely. Bullshit. I'll definitely like come back. We'll we'll definitely come back to this later. But another thing that is crucial that they say is that they want to bring like the, they're treating the fans mm -hmm. as a stakeholder in the sport, which we definitely, most definitely are. And this is what we've been going on about for so long is that the fans and the fans' opinions has to be taken into consideration because the fans yeah. cannot be being shit on all the time and freaking ask for you know you, you, can't, you can't just shit on your fans 
uh, if you're a sport, mm. and then like keep pull- keep putting races the next week, and expect them to line up again. And could I please have some more shit, sir? Yeah. Like you know, you can't. You can't. That, that's that's but, that's. But it's one of those things. Like even like, you eat enough shit, you get used to it. <laughs> That's true, and like, yeah. that can be one of those things. Learned helplessness, yeah, like that that kind of shit. Yeah, it's it's very real. Okay, so let's go, let's go back. But to... I'm not saying they people shouldn't revolt or anything like that because they should. Yes, and they ought 100B. to. One hundred P. One hundred P. But <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about what's happening. It, John John Malone. So Liberty Media, the Liberty Media Group, is basically like. The person in charge, the person that built that group is John C. Malone, referred to some back in the day as the Darth, the Vader, Darth Vader of of cable television. Um, this was due to apparently his uncompromising stake that he had in uh, um, in his dealings with cable television in the States. Uh, and it, it, and just the way that he did some of his early deals. But I actually want to point out that that came out like early on like before before he had a revelation and i want to talk about that in a minute so revelation. No, he had a revelation man I, i'll get into john, john c malone in a minute before 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 that okay so john c malone head guy of liberty yeah he's coming in by bringing his company as part of the uh, of, of you know a, a, as a new owner in the same way that donald mckenzie the previous uh, the, the guy that runs cbc was involved in f1 in some way shape or form be like just simply by owning him yeah there's john c malone um but crucially crucially as as far so bernie is staying a ceo but crucially john malone is bringing chase carey into this operation as the chairman of the board and first and first I thought, oh, you know, uh, chairman yeah. of the board, Bernie's still mm-hmm. going to be the boss and whatever until I started to get a little bit more into it. But we'll pull up a picture of this, of this, of this guy, Ch- Chase Carey. In the official release, the, the real, the official wording yeah. is Chase Carey has been yeah. appointed yeah. by Delta Topco, but mm-hmm. don't forget who controls Delta Co- Topco now. <laughs> well, the thing about you don't know about Bernie is that you think his puppet strings only go down, they actually go up as well. Oh, you <laughs> fucking <wait. laughs> Yeah, buddy. I can't, I can't wait to see how so all these guys' pictures. Look at all this. This the podcast can see uh, your screen right now. Yeah, can yeah, see yeah. that. All these pictures. Look at this look, look, guy. Look, 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 look. As a businessman, look at look at him. He Dude, looks like no, he's no, got no, the. F- Pull, pull up that, that full body picture of this. If you're if you're listening to this, uh, you know, on your drive home or whatever, Danny, describe this guy. Dude, he looks I'm like he it. invented a gun. <laughs> He's he very American. Like, yeah. <laughs> like the, the the most trustworthy guy. Look how charming he is with that mustache, the bright blue eyes. He's got the yeah, newspaper so he, in hand. He's got a name tag on in that photograph. Well, I was no no no, but he but he you know he may yeah. as well be with the, with a mustache. Jesus. Could, could keep, <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, th- that that picture of him. There. Look at look at the one down to the right. Sc- go down uh, like two levels on the very right. Look at that. Look at this guy, man. Yeah, there Ima- he is. Okay, now imagine him beside Bernie Ecclestone. Look at Bernie with his squinty face and his thick glasses and liver spots all over his face and yelling at people and <laughs> talking in nothing but sarcastic sentences. He's ridiculous. This guy, he's gonna rip that mustache out of his own face trying to deal with Bernie. <laughs> He's not gonna nothing. I kind of think like as optimistic as I am, I'm really happy. Like this guy's history is fantastic. It's unbelievable, and now he's the yeah. chairman of Formula One. I don't know how much he's gonna get done in the next three years though, with Bernie sitting on top of him. Okay, but he, this is what I want to elaborate on because that's yeah, yeah. what I thought. Yeah, that's I want to make. That's what I thought. This is all I've been thinking. No man. Okay, so <laughs> here, let me break it down. Okay, so just like you, so like just like you said. The buddy over here, Look at Chase, him, man. K- Chase oh, Carey. You want to give him a big hug, right? He has. He's one of the few people that I've ever, ever heard being described as avuncular. 
avuncular. Avuncular. He's what does like, that mean? Apparently, it's just, I, just in the research that I was doing, like while, while I was looking up uh, this guy, uh, I stumbled upon a video of like some dude from the Financial Times, I think, uh, calling him avuncular. Avuncular apparently means uh, like an uncle. He's like an uncle. He's like, Uncle, Uncle Chase. Uncle, right. yeah. Uncle Chase. Uncle right. Chase. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's, yeah. And, and that's apparently like the vibe that he, that he gives. But also that's just apparently also what, like how he's like, if you talk to Buddy over here, he's just gonna. For sure. Look at that, that photo. Look at yeah, that photo. Come here, man. Uh, like, let's do this. We got we got, we had a comment says uh, Vince Labera. He says he looks like a villain from a costume drama in a Shakespeare story. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like <laughs> with a with a cape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> now, Chase Carey. I want I want. Let's pay attention here because I want to take you on a journey. Okay, of. Chase Carey and why I think that he was extremely not just passively as I thought before but extremely influential in actually working out this deal <clears throat> let me roll up my Your sleeves, sleeves up. Yeah, please please okay. do <laughs> so Chase Carey he was involved he, he's basically known right now or right before up until uh, let's, let's say the beginning of last year Mm -hmm. Basically, when we started to do this podcast, right, right. If you look back, uh, as, uh, when, uh, when we started to do this podcast, the beginning of last year, he was considered to be Rupert Murdoch's number two. Oh okay? shit! Yeah. So, as in Rupert Murdoch is the owner of and the, the main guy of News Corporation, mm -hmm. which owns among many things many newspapers, but crucially. 21st Century Fox and all the Fox News networks in, uh, in in North America and around the world and also around Europe Sky and all the Sky Net be Sky B and all the Sky networks okay. and he, huge huge okay. huge media conglomerate right and he was for so long thought of as number two now let me delve a little bit more into this guy's career because he start he basically started it in News Corp as like you know mid management whatever and he actually worked his way up and up and up by basically being a great negotiator kind of like bernie mm -hmm. but in a different approach as bernie right like as you can see like in an avuncular approach so <laughs> yeah I, I just looked that up it's not a avuncular like he's like a noun like like the noun is avuncular it's a one word avuncular, avuncular yeah a of B or relating to the relationship between men and their siblings' children. Yeah. Relating yeah. to an uncle. Yeah. Relating, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's the, uh, comes from the dictionary. So, so anyway, so he, he <laughs> worked his way up, uh, News Corporation. And at one point he left News Corporation, uh, you know, while being like still like a highly regarded uh, executive to, and News Corporation. Again, let's remind ourselves, uh, we're talking about Rupert Murdoch's company. Mm. And then he went to DirecTV. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, mentioned, we, mentioned, we, we mentioned this like a couple of weeks, but no, the thing is that during his time at DirecTV, this was like back in like when, when cable or sorry, when, when satellite was starting to become a thing. Back in his days in, in DirecTV, he turned DirecTV um, from like a local US thing in some states to a big thing around the US and the world. I remember. Because, okay, when I was a kid and before I moved to Canada, I remember that, like, fucking DirecTV even was, like came to Colombia and was offering, like, retarded shit that nobody could offer in, in my little <laughs> jungle town. Like, before before Satellite came uh, to my town in Colombia, the most that you could ever hope for was, like, 40, 50 channels just because it was it's so backwater out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. And then a Satellite came and, like, you ha like you saw, man, it was crazy. There were, like like, houses, like, maybe, like, as big as this room with a satellite sticking out of it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, my, my, I was just, I, this is just that an aside. I was talking, my dad had a big pile of garbage in my driveway, like a fucking redneck hoarder until yesterday. <laughs> my dad helped me take that shit to the dump. 570 kilos of garbage. Oh I was my just telling God. him yesterday though. I still have, um, sticking on the back of my house. There's five satellite dishes yeah. and my neighbor, 
my the house uh, right beside me. I think he has six. So there's eleven dishes all beside each other in the back of my house. Eleven or ten, and uh, the guy that I got my house from, he was he was just into stealing satellite. Like there's Buddy, there's like five or six cables running all around you, the side of my house. You owe talking. that all. To, to that dude, to, yeah. That magnificent mustache. Yeah. Well, I was just telling my dad yesterday, though, like, that's old technology. I'm going to, I want to take him down before winter. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got... It is old technology. <laughs> yeah. But there, anyways, there's 10 of them because of this mofo. So he, yeah. So he, he and he did it by um, what a lot of people, th- okay. So he's been, his his strategy at DirecTV has been described over and over and over as a focus strategy. He had a vision, a long-term vision of where he wanted the company to do. He knew what needed to happen, and he worked very hard. None of this last-minute bullshit changing of directions. No, he's a focused operator. Mm. And this is basically from everything that I read about this guy. That's like the main thing that you have to understand is that he is like he's direct and he's focused in what he does, mm. and he gets it done. You know that because every single morning he is curling that mustache. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's putting the wax in there. Yeah, wax in there, yeah. combing it, trim it. Well, that pic- he's not too trimmed in that pic. He should have <laughs> known he was going to a meeting or something. But so well, what, you got to even up that. Uh, now he that he bottom, went. The, he went to Directv, right? So he started. He started in Rupert Murdoch's company, News Corp. He went. He he got fa- fairly high up. Then he got poached by Directv, and Directv. And in his dealings at DirecTV, it actually coincided with at the time that the chairman of DirecTV, so he was like he was brought on as like you know president or CEO or whatever, so you know high, high, the highest executive at DirecTV and like grew DirecTV into like what DirecTV once was. And the, the guy that was the chairman at DirecTV was none other than John C. Malone. The DirecTV at that point was a John C. Malone company, so that's where they met or you know whatever i'm sure they met before but that's where like they forged the relationship when john malone owned DirecTV and he was running it and he like did a good job by staying focused by staying on track by actually like meeting like targets to the uh, uh to the shareholders producing some like dividends but also also something that he knows how to do well is to convince the board that he doesn't need or that they don't need dividends if mm. they can invest back in the company for future growth. Right. Right? Which is very important. And this is what it... This is the opposite of what CVC did when they took oh, yeah. over. They didn't say anything. They didn't, like, make a big... They, they made kind of a deal, like, oh, we, we, now we don't have fun. But they didn't say, like, this is our vision. We're going to do this, this. Don't, fans are going to love what we're, what we're about. We're going to come back. We're going to revolutionize the sport. We're going to even everything up. These guys are like, listen, don't, everything's going to be sweet. Wait, give us like five years. We're going to straighten this mess. Yeah, that's that's the point. That's him. He's going to yeah. straighten the fucking mess. And okay, let me keep, let me keep telling you because I'm not done with the Chase Carey story. So, <laughs> uh, You know you know he is, man. I want to yeah. give him a big hug. <laughs> so then... After after they have uh, such a big success uh, with with Directv, Directv got big, and there were rumors of Directv ta- basically taking over and buying out all the other satellites of uh, satellite services because Directv was huge around the world, not just America. But then the government stepped in, mm-hmm. and they actually told John Malone to back the fuck off. This company was getting too big. This, this, and that. He had to spin it off. He had to sell it. So something happened. You know, things had to, like, by law, they stopped the growth and, you know, antitrust and anti whatever. They, they play a big part in this kind of shit. And somebody told them, buddy's getting too big. You gotta get, you gotta fucking end that shit. And uh, Malone spun off DirecTV. He, at that point, because he then, like, I guess, saw no, more, no further growth, actually got poached back to News Corp. So he went back to News Corporation. Then, like now, having proved his worth by racing DirecTV like back from the ground, but let's not forget. So far, we're talking about all TV experience. All this is what he knows. He knows he's a TV guy, right? Mm. So then, we're, so in 2009, we start hearing uh, hearing reports. That's that's when uh, News Corporation brought him back, and they brought him back as president and COO. 
usually that like usually the role of president is or like sometimes like share like you, you do like president and ceo president you know and chairman or the, of the yeah. board or, no president and coo coo stands for chief operating officer so hmm. the guy that like is kind of ultimately responsible for like the day-to-day shit and like you know the the running of like the company as it were like no accounting no no other like services shit just running the fucking you know product that they're that they're that they're serving out there so he so he was brought on as president and coo of news corporation at a time that actually was ended up maybe accidentally but ended up being crucial to news corporation news corporation then went and got embroiled in a huge scandal do you guys remember this the news of the world scandal the phone no. hacking scandal so no. one of one of the news of the world's uh, or sorry one of the news corp's companies uh properties in the uk uh and this newspaper called news of the world started like had been under investigation for a long time for doing all kinds of crazy shit like just horrible horrible shit uh, one example was uh that they hacked onto uh, so they were hacking onto people's voicemails and oh they God. they started hack or <clears throat> and phones and they hacked into this dead girl's voicemails and it was like really like really shady because they started to like you know like produce material from voicemails that she got after she was dead oh. so they yeah so yeah yes <laughs> it's yeah. a little a little it, creepy, a little bad. But yeah, that's a little fast. Weird. Fast forward a few yeah. years after that happened, and you, use a six-digit PIN on your uh, your voicemail if you yeah, can. Yeah, no doubt. If, you, if your provider allows it. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, okay. so this and it, it, it was a tabloid, right? Like it was right. like a tabloid newspaper. They since have since like it's dead. Like the, the news, the news of the world newspaper does not exist in Britain anymore. And in the middle of that scandal, because it turned out that one of the uh, one of Rupert Murdoch's sons, actually, it's not proven and it cannot be proven, but the, the like the assumption was that like he knew he knew that this was happening, and he didn't just authorize it but kind of encouraged it. At least that's yeah. what some people were yeah. saying, right? Anyway, whatever. So, News Corporation then got into like a huge, huge, huge scandal, and it was seen by a lot of people. This is a, a report. Uh, then later, uh, the next year, in 2010 and 2011, um, <clears throat> they st- they started like the scandal really really blew up in uh, in 2011, right? Uh, but you know, even though the things that actually happened before then, like up to 2009 or something like that, uh, so the scandal blew up in 2011, and one of the analysts that uh, Bloomberg interviewed uh, basically said that, you know. It, it really makes sense. This guy, Chase Carey, he's basically number two and a long trusted advisor of Rupert Murdoch. Mm. Da, 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 da. He's, he wasn't really involved in any of that phone hacking scandal because back then he was involved with DirecTV mostly. He's a straight up guy. Look at him. He's the fucking uncle, right? So investors are going to love him. It only makes sense because back then in 2011, people were calling for Rupert Murdoch to step down and fuck off. And because mm. clearly you haven't been doing a good job at this because he was a CEO and the buck should stop literally like, like usually like, yeah, CEO is responsible for the day to day operation. Like, like ultimately. Yeah. So if this shit was happening under his watch, like people were calling people, people were like, you know, fucking pitchforks and Rupert Murdoch down, put this guy in control. If, and if, if you uh, just, I uh, just, just to pull it up to, Refresh my memory on his face. You you search the word Rupert Murdoch on Google. The top headline that comes out is Formula One takeover completed, leaving Bernie Ecclestone facing fight for control with Rupert Murdoch's ally. No, it's the top headline from is, today. That is a bullshit headline, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> yes. I'm going to tell you Break why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to tell you why. Okay, so Chase Did, Carey at this point, we're talking about 2011. 2011, yeah. Okay. And this is so. Let me just uh, bring it back one year, 2010. Uh, so a year after he got made uh, president and CEO, he was talking about like how you know TV was coming back, and you know so many people were like mm. invent like investing in in online shit at, at, the, at the time. But he's like, no man, TV and TV advertising, you know that the they're they're enjoying a renewed success. Obviously, he had to kind of say that because uh, Rupert Murdoch's stake on stuff like it's all TV, like it's he, he does nothing online pretty much. Mm. Um, but anyway, so. 2011, the, the scandal broke. People were basically calling for Rupert Murdoch and 
at one point while in that same Bloomberg interview, like this one interviewer was like, like basically like it's just like what investors are calling is for anybody but Him. or no anybody but anybody named Murdoch. So <laughs> no Murdochs as as a CEO of, yeah. of News Corp. Just so, and it so happened that at that point, buddy over here, the ovuncular Chase Carey was the highest uh, executive that wasn't a Murdoch or part of the family. Oh, really? And News Corp. So it made sense, and I I put it to you that it made sense to him. Uh, it yeah. made he, he was like, so he was like, all right, we're moving this forward. We're like, you know, we're like fucking going to push forward. We're going to like still like turn this company. And in his time, during his time at, uh, uh, at News Corporation, at that time, then that's, that's when he started – uh, the Fox News Network, and or sorry, uh, no, sorry. They, so yes, yes, sorry. The, the Fox News Network and uh, le, uh, things like it, 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 just basically like TV, TV for all, like lowest common denominator kind of TV. Uh, Maury, the, yeah, <laughs> just, just like the whole Fox gamma, like Fox Sports, Fox News, right, right. all that stuff. Red um, eye. Yeah, <laughs> and and show. and beefed up like the movie studios as well. Oh, I see. Okay, right. right. So so anyway, so he so he did he did a bunch of that stuff while all this was happening. So he was doing he was rebuilding the company. He actually had achieved quite a large amount of success. Hmm. Fast forward that to last year. All right, so we're talking 2015. Okay, so in the middle of 2015, uh, the Financial uh, Times comes and reports specific to 21st Century Fox that. Rupert Murdoch had announced that in, that he was going to retire. So he's like, okay, so I'm going to retire. I'm just going to, uh, you know, take up some position in the board. Mm. And who does he put as CEO? His son. Who does he put? He who does he put as co-chairman? His other son. So clearly, clearly, and this is one of the things that people, that investors spe- specifically, uh, like if if you had looked at the stock ticker for News Corporation prior to this. They were like said they, they they were said to be undervalued compared to like other companies uh, that did the same thing you know uh, media and whatever right, big right. big big mass media it their their company shares traded at a lower value because it seemed like Rupert Murdoch and and um, it, you know that that whole News Corp empire it really favors the Murdochs mm. really like he like he put his family like in positions and that's why they. That's why it would have been strategic and it would have been good. And everybody thought that it would have been a good idea to bring Chase Carey to the helm. But no, he didn't. And last year, this is when this is when all hell broke loose in, in News Corp because they didn't make him the CEO. They made his son. Like, he made his son the CEO, Rupert Murdoch's son, mm-hmm. and his other son, the co-chairman. So then what, what did he have to do? Nothing but resign. So he stepped out in what I think... Must have been some like come on, you had been like working for that. Everybody, everybody that knew every, anything about anything had could have told you like it's gonna be Chase Carey. It only makes sense. Yeah. He's a smooth operator. He's focused. He's this. He's gonna bring uh, News Corp back in track, back on track. And he wasn't. He was basically bitch slapped by by Rupert Murdoch by this asshole that- and told. The picture you're pointing at looks like he just got bitch slapped. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> second one down, second from the left. <laughs> yeah. So by Rupert Murdoch and told him to like fuck off. Sorry, like that position that you were like waiting for, my son is gonna have it. Wait, huh, did if you? Uh, <clears throat> if uh, John Malone is the Darth Vader, then uh, obviously Rupert Murdoch is the Emperor. I might I might have said that. Uh, Perhaps Bernie was, but no, no, <laughs> it's not even not even close to Burdock level. So he, so here's, but here is what had had been happening at that time. Now, remember that back then, as far back like as last year, we had said that uh, Sky was actually and had actually been looking for a while to buy F1. Mm-hmm. Through that, through those meandering about Chase Carey. Would have been one hundred percent. Got a sniff of that. Yeah. No. No. He would have been completely involved in at least like in in, in some managing ways, uh, into looking into F one. He wasn't. By the time that he left News Corp last year, he had an idea about what F one was worth and what you could do with F one to actually. Oh, this 
Bernie dude is retarded. Yeah. Look at all this. <laughs> look at all this room to grow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and and one of the things that he actually really likes is sports, and he and he really knows like he you know mm-hmm. he he basically he was one of the first ones that started to like invest heavily on like bringing uh, all the football, for example, in the states, the, the American football, to Fox to the Fox channels and uh, the sports, it, you know, through uh, anyway he so he was he's a sports guy, um, and he he understood the magnitude of what F one could be, and I put it to, yeah what's up sorry uh, I just want to say uh, after you're done your next um, phrase or stanza. Mm-hmm. We have a question. From Vince LaBera? Yeah, yeah. All right, well. So uh, on your own time, because I know you're on a oh. little diatribe, which is great. Uh, he sorry. was, he was. Okay. <laughs> so Vince LaBera, and, and oh, this is cool. Like, yo, uh, listeners, you can feel free to interact. So Vince LaBera says, did you guys talk about the consequences and possibilities of the new deal uh, we'll have on watching and availability of Formula One online and pay-per-view. Maybe you rendering your project 10 a weekend unnecessary. 10 a weekend is, is a success. Or a dead we did at the it. same time. We did it. Yeah. We did it. Oh, yeah. We got, we're going to get uh, into this. We did it. 10 we, a weekend is happening. We're yeah. going to see these oh, yeah. races available online cat. for <laughs> streaming to the entire world because of this. It's not going to happen now. Might take three years. It might take the three oh, years, yeah. but it's gonna happen. Oh yeah. We'll but take, we, I we'll, believe we'll take responsibility. This is I believe no, this the YouTube is what they're building up. The YouTube channel is gonna no, man. explode. No, man, this is this is what I'm saying. Like I'm building up to this. All right. Okay. Because uh, Vince, you're onto something with us, and this is what I. This is why I think that the ver- that the Liberty Purchase is so significant in terms of moving forward with the sport. For because, fans, for because, us. Yes, for fans, because they are actually thinking. They are thinking of making that happen. And I'll, I will back this up with some quotes later. But let me let me get to this because this gets thick. All right. You're so, on a big roll. I'm going to go pee now. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Chase Carey, betrayed by his previous vo- b- boss, um, Rupert Murdoch, he has an idea of what F1 could be, mm. right? A vision. A vision. Of, like a, like of, a Jedi vision yeah. of the future. And it's not hard to be- to believe that he got together with John Malone after he was unceremoniously fired mm. from News Corp, and just said like, "John, you and I work well together. Let me talk to you about F one." Mm. John, I see you're buying some sports properties here and there. Remember, remember what we did with Directv, something like that. I think I think we can export some of the things that we had been talking mm. about with F one. Or sorry, with with Directv back then, yeah. Into moving moving this F one thing to the future. Chase Carey is instrumental in this because he, through like his negotiations and or whatever talks at one point uh, of Sky buying F one would have would have you know dipped his toe, and would have like overseen and and, and Jesus. They may be onto something with this F one. Yeah. All right. So now, after he's been booting off, booted off of News Corporation, he's ha- he has all that information with him. What what does he do? He starts talks with John Malone, and they start formulating a plan. And this is a plan that is as much about <laughs> you know future growth of F one and actually making like tons and tons of money, yeah. which they will if they play their cards right. Yeah. As to like a big. Fuck you to Rupert Murdoch. They're no friends, man. They're no friends anymore. They might have been at one point or another affiliated, but this is Chase Carey basically like saying to uh, saying to Murdoch, fuck you. You guys didn't move in on F1. Just watch and see what I can what I what I can push this forth to do. Mm. All we need now is a ton of money. Now, this also strategically now coincides with what John Malone's vision for the future of television. This is the John, Mal- John Malone and Liberty Media right now. They're not just dealing like, you know, they're, they're not just the owners or partly part owners of uh, uh, the Discovery Group, like Discovery Channel and all the associated companies. No, 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 no. no. And, 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 you know, the, uh, they own like the Sci-Fi Network or no, sorry, the Stars Network. I think the Sci-Fi as well. Oprah Winfrey Network. They're not just owners History of like this Channel. stuff. No, no, no. They're they're actually, and this is what I came to realize. They're actually planning for the future of television at large. 
Wow. So now let me t- okay. Before I get to John Malone, which right. is the next big player in this story, I want to like establish one thing. So this guy Chase Carey, yeah, got brought in as chairman of the board of the Formula One group of companies, right? Bernie Ecclestone still remains a CEO, but what does that mean? So what what what's a, like what's a CEO versus a chairman? How much influence is he gonna have, right? So a CEO of a company, the CEO of a company is basically at the end of the day, the person ultimately responsible for all the operations of the company. This mm-hmm. is a person who's actually who actually has like you know a, a nine to five so to speak, and he has accountabilities and he has like you know get into meetings and whatever. Uh, the CEO, so the CEO basically, if anything goes bad with the company, what is a buck stop at the CEO? That's mm. if anything, anything at all happens with the company, the CEO is ultimately to blame because yeah. he's supposed to be the person that, you know, through whatever management structure you have in your company, yeah. that's like, you know, every, everybody's decision ultimately filter up to something that the CEO said. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. He is also responsible. The CEO is also responsible for, um, conducting the, the, the meetings, the board meetings. Mm. So he's, he's, he's also like the one that like explains to the board of directors why the company is doing this, why the company is doing that, et cetera, et cetera. Very often the public face as well. And public face as well, yes, correct. Now, who is the chairman of the board? Now, the chairman of the board is a bit of a tricky role because different companies have different standards for their chairman of the board. Yeah. Uh, who gets the vote? Who gets the talk? Who gets a lot of the, who has some, the... sometimes uh, you can be the chairman and CEO. That mm. is that happens all the time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but the fact that the chairman of the board is gonna be a brand new person that has huge implications. Now you can have a company where you have the CEO and the chairman that are kind of working together or whatever, like have like some sort of communication, but the chairman is kind of passive and the chairman of the board basically is the most senior person in the board of directors Mm -hmm. and their, their job is basically to 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 one point or another is basically to be available, to become available for meetings with the CEO and the rest of the board. I'm just going to say this dude here, uh, Chase Carey, you can kind of get the sense off the, off the mustache aside. You get the sense from looking at him and this whole splash that's being made with him that uh, he's here for business because yeah. we've been watching F1 longer than we've been doing this show and we've never mentioned the man he is succeeding, whose name is in the uh, official media release. Oh, no, because Peter Brebeck very... let Mate. Oh, no, he was just there because he was Bernie's pal. Have you ever heard that name before? Yeah, well, only be- only since this. Just since, about, since yeah. today or yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, never heard of this guy. This guy comes in with his fucking sharp suit and mustache, ready to kick ass. And can do attitude, bright smile, and an Funcular predisposition. The funny thing too is Peter Brebeck Ledmate, whatever, he will remain on the board as yeah. a non executive director. All right, because so so here so here's here, here's another <laughs> Just role to of the director. To this fucking mustache every day. More importantly, so a lot of a lot of directors or sorry, a lot of chairmen of the board out there, chairman mm-hmm. of the board, have a very passive role, like Buddy over there. That and that's and that's the point. Non executive director. No, but, but even before there were like before when he was a chairman, oh, he was basically yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just said yes to anything that Bernie like brought to him, right? That what? might be his job description <laughs> behind, you know, when they shake hands. Yeah. Well, no, no. With him though, this is gonna change because now yeah, now these guys have a fist bump. Do you think with no, Darth no. Vader? Yeah. Do you think that Chase Carey, after he was shot? on his face by Rupert Murdoch is going to let another octogenarian tell him what to do? No. Fuck no. No. Fuck no. So John Malone's only 75. No, no, I'm talking about Bernie. He's not. This this guy's not going to let Bernie tell him what to do. Chase Carey. No. Obviously not. No. I'm just pointing out John John Malone's going to tell him what to do. So here's what happens. Another another (laughs) role that sometimes in certain companies uh, uh, chairmen of the board uh, take is... uh, as, a, as an active, an active chairman, which means basically being alongside the CEO, basically as much as they want. They don't, they don't have to, but they can, mm. okay? And they can influence some of the decisions. The, if anything, the most important role that the board under, you know, the chairman of the board 
but uh, th their role, the most powerful thing that they can do is the board chooses whether or not to fire the CEO. Mm. Everybody, so in a company, everybody gets hired by somebody. Everybody has a manager except for the CEO, mm -hmm. right? But when, so when it comes to like decide like when to fire the CEO, when to bring in another CEO, the board makes that decision. That's why this is crucial because bringing in another, another chairman of the board, he can actually choose his board and he, and, and this is um, straight from a video that I watched about uh, from this business college. Uh, they interviewed this guy that is a, a, chair, a very like senior chairman of some company in, in Germany. And he basically says that if you want to be an active uh, chairman, you can bring in new people and you basically like you're there to make sure that upper management of the company that you're chairman of is sticking to the plan and is doing what they're doing. You're there to bring in the heat to Bernie. In that, in that sense, it's very analogous to being like the president mm. of a company or, or of a country type of thing or a prime minister or whatever. If you don't, people don't like what you're doing, your board, which would be like the, uh, the electorate, yeah, the, whatever co your country has set up, like uh, Brazil like just had the president beer. impeached, right? Yeah, from by the Senate. Yeah, kind of like a that, Senate. Yeah. In that sense, th their country is set up and that yeah, the, the Senate, people were getting pissed off and the senators were like, okay, we have to do something about this. Let's have a vote. Mm. They voted out the president. But also... So you're not doing a good enough job. We need somebody else to run this ship. And But you can choose... But, but right. he, here's the crucial it's part. You can choose to be an sense. active chairman of the board and... Yeah, or I, corrupt like the president of Brazil was and stole money. Okay, so a chairman of the board can be can choose to be active and actually influence the decision making of the CEO. Now, whereas the CEO actually has the decision making of the day to day operations, a chairman mm -hmm. can actually tell him where to take the company in vague terms and in general terms and hold them accountable to that, which is crucial. They can say, Bernie, you're not meeting this, these targets. You're not meeting, like, you know. Let's so see where's, our YouTube subscribers yeah, go up. Let's, yeah. let's get some more people following us on, on if, uh, Twitter. Like, people aren't clicking these hashtags enough. Stuff like that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and like I said, he's not going to be, he's not going to get told what to do by Bernie. He's probably by this point has had enough of that kind of person after his experience with Murdoch. <laughs> now, going back to his uh, to his buddy now, John Malone. Mr. Malone. Mr. Malone. Okay. Mad Max. <laughs> Mad Max Malone. Um, in 2010, he has a he has an interview that I found uh, pretty good in, in in terms of setting the tone of of what he of. Um, the tone of Malone? Yeah, the tone of Malone. The Malone tone? <laughs> and basically... It, it, what it, was it, that tone? And he started talking about how he's been investing in uh, in cable companies. And somebody like, you know, this girl comes and asks him, like, but, you know, what about, like, the t telephone companies? You know, in this, the, this, uh, the example was specific, I think, uh, uh, for AT&T in the States because they were talking about the States. And John Malone, the one thing that he said is that, listen, these people just don't understand where the world is going. Uh, they have way too many responsibilities, and he's talking about specifically so telephone companies. They have way too many responsibilities to their shareholders. They are like they, they, they promise so many dividends, and th these are long-standing deals for a while, whereas cable companies actually don't only have the hardware to begin with, um, but also like they're less tied to long-standing deals that they can actually invest in huge infrastructure uh, to to actually like in, in in that sense they have more firepower and when the girl like comes and I says what do you mean by, by by like you know by being more daring what what do you what do you mean they're like no no we're talking about like simply like you know bringing up speeds of of broadband because this is what this is what people want and he's even back in uh, uh, back then in in, in uh, when was this 2010 he knew he was he was he 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 had the foresight to say to sit down and think like okay I'm a TV guy or whatever and like most of my businesses are on TV but. He knew that the internet is gonna get is only gonna get huger. There has to be an investment in bigger, like bigger towers, bigger broadband, f faster, faster speeds. And the people that can do that are four K, three D, VR broadcasting is all coming. All three are coming through oh, the yeah. same pipe. Exactly. Yeah. And the people that could do that were cable companies, not telcos. Right. That's I, was just, I was just telling you, like, separate from all the F one stuff. I was mm -hmm. just about to uh, upgrade my home internet because. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm just going to share it with my neighbors now, basically. Yeah. We're going to go from 30 megabit, which I, or 35 I have now, yeah. to 100. And it's just the, the eight, like, when I, when I got this 35 megabit package, like, a year and a half ago, yeah. the 100 wasn't even available here yet. Now, the difference to upgrade is $11 a month, which is nothing. You know what I mean? In two years, I got the the second, the fastest or the second fastest package that was available, like, a year and a half, two years ago when i signed when i moved and signed up and now i just talked to my neighbors hey you want to share they're like okay i looked at the new packages it's an 11 dollar difference oh, to yeah. triple That's the funny. speed and then imagine i imagine in two or three more years i'll be able to get 250 or a gigabit for probably 10 or 12 bucks a month more so malone knew that this was coming obviously yeah that, right? it's crazy and before that i moved to this place from my last place yeah. I think I was getting about 20 megabit or something for the mm. same price. I just moved. I was like, hey, you guys upgraded your packages the same price. I was I was paying for a slower speed that they had already upgraded, but they didn't, they're not going to tell me that, right? You no. Gotta, you got to figure that out yourself. <laughs> That's just where the – you're right, though. That's where it's going. And you can expect probably in two or three years it'll double or triple again for probably the, sa the same price. Yeah. So, so, the, so, so number one – Malone understands the importance of broadband and and yeah. and the internet. Okay, so we, and we got that from way back in in in, um, in 2010. Now fast forward. Partly because of this was the reason I looked up the packages, <laughs> the packages too. I was just thinking like, oh, I wonder, I wonder what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. So, that, so that's one thing that he understands. Now, there's yeah. another thing uh, that that, that, he, that he was too. talking about. After this whole Directv thing happened, and the U.S. basically told them to settle down with this big expansion of TV. You, 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 you got to think back. And he basically got together back in like the, I think it was 80s or something. He got together with Ted Turner and started uh, like things like the, you remember TNT, the t uh, Turner, t Turner News, News, whatever. Tr yeah, whatever. whatever, like, uh, yeah. whatever. Um, and, and a few different channels that like eventually became like, uh, you know, from regional to like national, uh, etc. Like he he basically did that. The Nashville, uh, no, no, I'm TNN. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah, of TNN. No. But yeah, all, all those like Spike yeah. TV with that that explosion in the late early 2000s. Yeah, he was. The, he there was, was the definitely Speed Channel. Part speed of Channel no, was no. big enough one. He was part of that, and and that's one of the things that apparently he orchestrated. He orchestrated a meeting of everybody that was involved and that was doing TV in the states and sat them all down and said, "We have to work." together specialty said, channels people were to like together what? What and we have to channel? bundle tv and yeah. this is where, where where tv is going blah 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 blah, blah. he yeah. was he was all about everybody moving uh, everybody getting together and everybody getting a slice of the pie mm -hmm. back then after he got told to fuck off from us tv business he said that he went and discovered the world so he he stepped up, he, he dialed down his U.S. operations, and he started to go around and see what was going on in Europe, and see what was going on in like you know the the, the emerging markets in, in in Africa and and South America, and see what was going on over there. And that's what I mean by that's when he had his his revelation. This was after uh, the days when they called him Darth Vader. He actually went out and saw shit. Things are being done differently outside of the U.S., but there's also a lot of room to bring in, you know, a, a, a lot of the same ideas that he had, all right? And at that point, he started with his sidekick, uh, the guy that uh, is now the CEO of uh, Discovery Media. Uh, pull him up. His name is David Zaslav, Z-A-S-L-A-V, David Zaslav. As a Z A S L A V. Anyway, so uh, yeah, L A V L A V. Oh my god. Yeah, whatever. You will get it with there. Yeah. So with David Zaslav, uh, his buddy from uh, uh, from uh, Discovery, which they control, they started going around and doing things like purchasing um, the 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 uh, that big European like yeah I think it's Eurosport. So the the big Eurosport network investing heavily on things like. Um, the, the Olympics coverage, they put it all in, in Eurosport, uh, investing on specialty channels, like I, like I mentioned before, the Oprah, uh, the Oprah Winfrey Network. Uh, on, on yeah, they, even, they, even, they even came up with a, a hundred uh, yeah, of them now. Yeah, but specifically yeah. Uh, then, then, yeah, uh, the Liberty, for, uh, of Liberty and, and DirecTV. So they, they switched uh, DirecTV's focus of just like American content 
um, and you know the, the animal cha- animal plan and all that, mm-hmm. and like basically turned it into like you know there's an there's an Italian Animal Planet and the people and like they crucially uh, say that like if you tune into Animal Planet in Italy you think it's you know you it's not like that you're watching like an American channel you're just watching Animal Planet and it's like as, as Italian as you know the next Animal Planet Planeta is. Alemania something like that <laughs> whatever yeah whatever <laughs> Alemania is Germany actually <laughs> whatever it might, it might be anyway so <laughs> they saw the potential of like breaking barriers and and actually investing on scale and this is one thing that John Malone apparently like one of another one of his revelations uh, was with Netflix and he actually like talks very highly about Netflix and the Netflix model and and really, everybody laughed at yeah, those dudes no. ten years ago they had those machines in the grocery store or you could like get DVDs mailed to your house and mail them back uh, or, or I'm, I'm thinking I'm confusing with Redbox but. Yeah, they were mailing DVDs in the beginning, and you would oh, no, rent them through the mail. Uh, so people like, thought it was stupid. The now one, the one thing that he like admires about the Netflix model and 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 Reed Hastings is that he recognized the power of scale. And and he said and 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 he and, he, and then he saw shit. No, what what we're facing right now is a world, and and like John Malone then then like came to a conclusion: the world is changing. And we can no longer. And he, 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 this is something he says. We can't. We can't see uh, anymore. Uh, you know. The, the, you know. You, you don't just like tune into a channel. Or you don't just like go. Uh, like people aren't just going to like. You know. Let's let's uh, let's go to this brand. You know. This channel and see like what kind of content they have. They want to go straight to the content. And instead of thinking of individual TV shows and individual TV programming as part of like say the discovery brand or part of like the sci-fi brand or whatever no they're there it's intellectual property in its own right and it has to be treated as that and it has to be adaptable to the uh random access model as in netflix you know to you you gotta you gotta be able to that has to be able to like to, to be portable enough to like be brought to the next level like the on-demand sort of style of yeah r- right right like no one wants to wait a week for another star trek that episode or... and original content yeah, yeah. Is, so this is, is the other big step that they need this is what they did and and <laughs> their brilliance since then is apparently so this uh, and now this is from a um a vanity fair interview dating from last year so from 2015 this is from 2015 man they had they had they said <laughs> they said for the past four years or so since we had that realization, basically, we've been focused on getting, like, going out there and getting basically stuff that appeals to the super fans. That's the name that that he has for them. That that, that David, uh, what was the name, Saslov, has for them. But really, what they mean by that is niche programming. So they went them, on a limb. Them, you mean us? Well, no, no, the super as, fans. As, no, we are the super no, fans. The, yeah, super we, are, we are with the super fans. <laughs> as the super fans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so he says, no, we, what, what we focus is on getting, um, you know, getting that kind of niche programming because, and this is crucial, as of last year, Buddy hit here right beside John Malone said, we know that, you know, with the, with the purchase of Eurosport and all these, like, interests that we have in between Liberty Media and, uh, and Discovery, the we just have like you know sort of like a, a we have a pretty legit business for about 5 to 7 more years he said we're in a pretty good position for about 5 to 7 more years but by then when random access and on demand programming becomes uh, significant becomes more relevant we want we also want to make sure that we're in a position where we have the intellectual property mm. the content that people are gonna be after for like so that's that's what they've been doing they've been building the arsenal their arsenal of specialty programming and things that appeal to the super fans and especially one of their big strategies is sport because sport like we've been saying yeah. is one of the things that you have to have you have to have yeah. live you have you know like with f1 i i'd like to think that like maybe not so much because even we like watch some of the races but it's super nice when we can watch the races live and yeah. then we do right yeah. so sport is that that last thing that maybe they had been uh, but f1 investing. is one of those sports where it's sort of the minority in, in the sense that, it's like, like niche it's a niche one yeah. in the sense that in terms of the sports umbrella yeah is that it happens every few weeks 
on a different continent, right? Let me let me step in and contradict you here, both of you. Uh, in terms time, of live, in terms of live, right? Because are you going to okay? Gonna real quick, because I got much more to say. I know you do. I know you do. Yeah. But this is this is a good time to to, to squeeze this in here. Um, <clears throat> we, we were just talking about this before, but the, the, Mike, the, I don't know if your like your Wi-Fi is not on. Is it? it is on. Okay, yeah, we're, we're good. good. We're good. Okay, sorry. Um, we were just talking about this be, uh, just before the show, but exactly what you were just saying. Check this out. The Formula One YouTube channel, okay? Mm-hmm. Formula One, two years ago, they were boasting as, we've talked about this, the biggest annual sporting series mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. 400 million TV viewers throughout the season. Yeah, at one point, they said they had 500 or something. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. F- well, two years ago, it was at 400 million. Mm-hmm. Their YouTube channel right now has 224,000 subscribers, 29 million views. They've been on youtube since 2005 so 11 years they've managed a total of 317 videos okay that's nothing so yeah i'm gonna point out the about four or five ways f1 failed here yeah no and again th- this is the the fighting analogy but two or three weeks ago the ufc i'm sure any of you that hate fighting don't give a shit only want to hear about racing that are listening right now you probably heard in the news that ufc sold and it was the biggest sports acquisition of all time if mm-hmm. not tied for the first because uh it was about four billion dollars and uh in may the dallas cowboys was valued by forbes at about four billion so mm-hmm. they're both really close but the top five are like real madrid is worth 3.65 the barcelona soccer team is 3.55 the new york yankees baseball team 3.4 billion Man U, the soccer team, Manchester United, three point three billion. F one just sold on Tuesday for eight and a half billion dollars. <laughs> I don't know That's why. The biggest they, thing. They missed out. These media the, these wh- media giants did not I didn't see one headline that says this just uh, one month ago they're boasting. That was the biggest sports transaction of all time. It just got doubled on Tuesday. Nobody knows that. Why not? What's wrong with these F one guys? <clears throat> Just just these uh, compared numbers here. The UFC's YouTube channel joined in 2006. A year later, they started at one year later, right? 3.3 million subscribers, 915 million views, and a total of 4,956 videos. Okay, how does that cont- contradict anything that we were saying? That the Formula One's not doing any of this. Okay, but we're not talking about Formula One yet. Right, anyway, yeah, so they, they, but they just said that they're doing all this. They missed. No, nobody, they missed that. Nobody's no. They're they're not doing it. That's a problem. Yeah. So what? what they, I don't what? believe they even have five to seven years. Is is my biggest point right here? No, no, no. They just with dub, dub with, the with their with their businesses time. with their businesses before F one. This is an interview uh, outside. Of, oh, yeah. No, they, no, no. This is what I'm okay. saying. From from 2015, they said right now, Sorry. like in their many like businesses. Um, Liberty Media and Discovery said we have we have like a good reliable business in place right now to last five to seven years, and this is this okay. means like all the TV sh- channels that they have, the Oprah Winfrey Network, etc. Oh, so et I got extra excited because yeah. I thought you meant they're saying F one's five no, no, to no, seven no, years. No, no. <laughs> they don't have no, five no, to no, seven no, years no, of no, F1 no, 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 at this rate. No. I hope. The they, yeah, they do now. No, they no. do now. Okay, yeah, exactly. I'm but, still confident. So <laughs> <laughs> they said that with with uh, this was a justification for buying all this uh, different like niche programming. F1 only fits in that so well. It's a niche programming and it's something that they can grow. But uh, this was before the purchase of, of F1. They were basically saying, yo, TV is only going to be around for five to seven years mm-hmm. more. Like TV as we know it, the broadcast, uh, you know, the cable television model is going to be around for five to seven years. That's it. After that, people are everywhere are going to be demanding, uh, you know, random access and on-demand shit. Mm-hmm. And when that happens, we got to be ready with the content to satisfy that niche and satisfy that need. That's how they justified their purchase of things like you know ramping up uh, a, a huge investment into the Olympics in Europe, uh, the things like uh, the French Open, you know. So any so yeah, one, that's one of the examples that they brought up. They said, listen, like the French Open, uh, anybody that is interested in tennis is gonna watch that. Mm. So the fact that we have that like that locked down, that means that for the future, 
And this is what I love about the, about these guys. They're not talking like everybody else in the TV world. They're not talking about next quarter. They're talking about five to seven years when the internet is completely pervasive and everybody's watching on-demand content. We have to have the content to provide and live entertainment is going to play a crucial role. Now, sorry, sorry to cut yeah. you off, uh, but like the, the big thing that was glaring out to me, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying like... A, I think it's brilliant that that concept. It's like, yo, uh, make sure we have the content for the next for the next six to seven years. Mm-hmm. But what if that's not the content that people want? What if that changes as as the internet sort of evolves and as all these things that's change? Why that's why they're banking on the super fans, the people that will watch no matter what. The right. people that would that. Had, so, it, it, one of the examples that they brought up that uh, this guy I, David Saslav brought. I almost up. hate to admit it, but. I'll tell these guys right now, if you're listening, Liberty Media, I'm going to be watching in two years no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> hopefully it's cooler. Hopefully it's better. Hopefully they pr- do all the shit they promised. Just, We're just the don't super fans. gouge me like Bernie does. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I promise right now. Does it, yeah. I know uh, some people just tuned out. I, I don't think that's wrong to say. I won't ever mention the UFC on here again. <laughs> the last time, though, you want to mention a niche, though. The biggest event they ever had, their equivalent of a Grand Prix was last week, 1.6 million viewers ever. The first time ever. There's only a second time they ever passed a million. Mm-hmm. The Formula One Grand Prix are in the millions every week. Mm-hmm. Every week, worldwide, there's yeah. tens of millions. Never again will I mention. But as far as a niche goes, F1 is not a niche, but... To to follow a season, I guess we're a niche. Yeah. To follow the the yeah. well, grump, the full grump. It's something. It's something that they can build up on, and right, and create the niche a little, too. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And 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 he, so here here's create, another thing. You can uh, branch your content for the the niche and the and the the people that want to see their. I'm, I, like I'm a Belgian. I want to see the Belgian Grand Prix. Right. That's all I care about. Mm. But I really care. You and can that, monetize those people too easily. And that vanity fair, and, and this is something like, geez, man, the, the more like that that I that I ran into these guys, yeah. the more I liked the deal. Because let me, because so he, here's what he said last year uh, at that same vanity fair interview. Um, the the interviewer asked him like, hey, so basically like, are you not like, are you not worried about these disruptive technologies that are coming? You know, the internet, fucking Netflix, whatever, YouTube, whatever. Are you not worried about that shit coming? And Malone was like, <laughs> he's like, brilliant. He's like. He's like, no, what you do is you farm both sides of the fence. Mm. <laughs> you oh, yeah. you put, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, you just, John Malone, call me up, man. I called it. <laughs> I know how this works. Yeah, so I know how this works. He's talking about a fully integrated model, okay? Where, and he's also a big fan. Uh, in, in a previous, in another interview, they started asking him about like, you know, what do you think of so and so? What do you think of this and this person? He, he's a big fan of the, of, I forgot the name, uh, the guy that's running Disney because of the way that he managed to like f- extract like the maximum uh, or by, f- by, by basically focusing this, the different sides of the Disney empire on something like Miley Cyrus. Mm. You know, you have a TV show, you have movies, you have like fucking CDs and right. music that are that, like bringing that asset and making money out of it all as opposed to bleeding the asset, just, you know, commercializing like every single aspect. So this is what he sees. This is how he sees right. television going like in the, you know, in the next five to seven years when it's, when it's random only. Now he starts talking about how TV and TV channels are not going to disappear. So, in, and this is what he calls them. He calls them aggregators. So you have the TV channels who are like, and, and it's true. They are just basically stewards of the information. And some people out there are going to always need TV. They're always going to need an aggregator. Somebody to tell them like, you know, out of the million like bits of content out there, just make a channel for me and I'll watch it. Right? Right? He, so he, so, but he's talking about integrating the aggregators, like i.e. the what we know today as the TV channels, with the distribution, as in the people that own uh, the, all the content, with the random access model, because, they, because he, he, he identifies the crucial thing about the random access model is that you can get instant feedback about what people like and what people want to see more of. What's, and, that, what's that weird annoying older lady who has a talk show on netflix now chelsea handler yeah oh the, that's and the probably the first example of this mm-hmm. netflix is an on-demand service with yeah. a now yeah. inter, they do a live talk show 
what I don't know. I've never watched two or three times a week. Whatever that is, whatever that show is, you know. No, I've seen it. Don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, it I makes don't, you whatever. Yeah, swallow nails. I don't. I've seen her before, so I, haven't, I never bothered to check out a show. But yeah. what they, but yeah, it's an on-demand service that also has live shows, and then it becomes on-demand as soon as it's over. But mm. they start to, that. There's no reason you can't watch that. Yeah. Where's the Formula One race pass? We need a no. dedicated look, service. Look, no, no. This he's thinking way ahead, man. St stick with me. He, this is what he said, and I'm, I'm gonna. Stuck. I'm, I'm stuck. Gonna, I'm gonna try to like read it verbatim. So he says once. We're on a random access platform. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about TV in general. We know a lot about the behavior of the viewer. And, um, uh, Privacy and, and we issue. can feed that back. So the behavior, of the viewer, we can feed that back um, uh, to, the advertisers. to the advertisers. Yeah, you can feed that back to the advertisers. You it's know, by, by the telling them. Like, invasion of privacy. Right? No, but, you know, you, you can feed. So you you know when people are going to be watching. Mm -hmm. and, what kind and, of snacks they like to munch on and lick their fingers from. Or, and, and the cheese or, they or like whatever. to lick or off like, their fingers. Or if they tune out after a certain ad, they can they can tell that to the advertiser. They can say, yo, your ad is simply not working. We're going to remove it. So you can feed that back, like create better ads. But he's also then saying, no. And furthermore, you can feed all of that then back to our own programmers. So, so then if... If they also have a relationship with the people that are doing like the so the TV channels, they can then feed that back to TV channels and say like, all right, listen, when you're putting content down, this is what's Here's hot. The highlights. This is what yeah, this is what's yeah. hot, and so you can optimize what people really want to watch. And it seems like that that is it's very simple, but that is his stance. He wants he he has it very clear that people know what they want to watch, and people will go out of their ways uh, to find the content that they want, and. If we can make more of that, and by analyzing random access, we will. And mm -hmm. then he steps in and he says, listen, they, what all of this is going to allow us to do is invest more money into content because then we'll know what to invest in. And then we'll know what to tell the advertisers to invest on. So this is huge, man. They're talking about an actual consolidated platform. The other thing is, though, it's, at the end of the day, it's not that big because we've both been talking about this. A certain group that just promised I wouldn't talk about it anymore has been doing this for yeah. two years now, and so has we, as we've talked about baseball, soccer, football, every sport that uh, other, uh, uh, exists in the world. Hockey that has a world league. Malone, F one's one, catching up. Malone at one point. You're that, saying it like it's a revelation. It no. is to us. It well, is to us. Malone at one point when uh, he he was basically asked, "Listen, if you were allowed to do anything, if there was no problem with like these regulators or whatever, mm. if you were allowed to do, what would you do?" And he basically said, "Listen, I'd get everybody together, and I and I force everybody to come up with a universally available platform when <laughs> where." Race if pass. He, that and he said that he, he said it basically. No, no. But he's talking about everything. He said that includes HBO. That includes stars. That includes everything. Every content out there. Make it available. And if somebody wants to tune in and watch, um, and just watch like the the they call it linear. If you want to watch linear, as in if you want to watch just normal like good old TV with the ads and everything, that's there. But it's tracking the ads that you watch and it's tracking your usage. Mm. And if you don't want to watch that, if you want to go straight to the content, you go to the content. And that has its, uh, like its, uh, you know, its own ads like in, in one way or shape or form that are easier to track. And, and you can monetize that activity for anything and everything. If you notice on uh, Netflix TV shows, like any of their original content or original movies or something, mm -hmm. if there's a scene that somebody goes to a bar, somebody buys oh, yeah. beer, somebody drinks beer... Etc. It's a Bud Light. It's a Budweiser or Bud Light. You'll mm -hmm. see like there's a scene of like somebody like could be any show. A guy's like pissed off sitting in a bar is all. There'll be like a Budweiser sign flashing behind him. Two people are having a beer in the afternoon. Whatever. You, you see a lot of content placement on Netflix. Like they've the, the, been the, on top of that. The crucial question, according to this guy, David. I'm sorry for everyone. But you, you're never gonna not notice the beers again. <laughs> yeah. You, every time you watch Netflix, you're and, like, and there's Budweiser again. And if they're drinking, they're gonna be drinking a Coke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's like, like a bunch of products uh, that you just see in I every think, show on Netflix. I think in, in in Chelsea Handler's show, like not not her weekly show, but the one that she had about drugs or whatever, like she also did a couple product placements. Anyway, that, but yeah, that, that, that's just <laughs> yeah, where they, yeah. that's just where things are going. But yeah. uh, like just one of the things. If anyone wants to place any products in this room, <laughs> yo, yeah, yeah, we're yo, open. Yep. Yeah. 
Yo, uh, look at all this space I have right here. Flatofever.com. <laughs> Flatofever at gmail.com. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, can I just yeah. one point? Yeah. Uh, no apologies. I, as, as much as I love this and I do and I think mm. it's great, but like we're talking a lot, like a lot of advertisement and uh, I've been noticing, like I know you guys aren't on Facebook, but mm. I am. And what, sponsored content getting error? Yeah, but not even that. But like content that's like shown to me based on what I've searched and actually bought on Amazon or any other thing. Oh yeah. Uh, it and like that is it scares me. Yeah. Well, I don't know why that's a question mark, but it does. V- VPN make your purchases incognito or with a VPN. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but I mean like use Facebook. Okay, with right, a, right, right. Just so, turn off Facebook. Delete that account. Delete all your pictures one by one. Check off all those. It's gonna take you like three hours because they're. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not like I. Okay, I or just keep, I, or just I, keep using Facebook. I am well because it's useful and it has its uses. Yeah. Like I'm not saying it's it's innocent. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely not perfect and it's definitely creeping into my life. But like advertisement is can be scary. Well, absolutely. Uh, in, yeah. in that sort of a sense. Did you guys see uh, a few days ago that SpaceX and other fucking nine exploded? Yeah. You hear what the payload what? was? No. The payload was built in Israel for Facebook, Facebook satellite. And it was going to uh, hang geostation, as far as I know, going to hang geostationary over Africa and provide free internet and data access to Facebook. A bunch of Africans to Facebook for, for in exchange for what? <coughs> uh, bunch Africans. of ads. All ads. of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. But it blew up on the launch pad, and uh, it's going to take a few months to rebuild it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> don't, don't fucking laugh. Nobody's laughing. <laughs> I'm going to get assassinated by Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> the point There's that I see. There's a drone sitting up, upside my oh, house oh, right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the whole point that I think, like, all, all of this really, like, has to, like, that, that I really want to drive is these guys they have a clear vision of the future and their previous endeavors and what they had done before uh, getting into F1. You see Chase Carey's eyes there? He sees clear. Those bright blue ones? Oh my, God. my goodness. <laughs> you, mean, you mean this guy, David Sastov? No, no. Oh, Chase Carey Chase, as Chase well. Chase Carey. Yeah, actually, actually, this guy's eyes are brown. <laughs> Aren't they? I guess so. Uh, Chase Carey's eyes, man. Yeah, I know. Zoom in on a pair. Chase, Chase <laughs> Carey, Chase Carey. No, no, no. Chase Carey. Guy. Mustache, mustache. Yeah, look at, oh, look at those. I know those br- those those bright blues. Um, but yeah, these guys definitely have a f- have, a, have a vision for the future. Chase Carey uh, was instrumental into bringing maybe F uh, F one into their attention. But now that it is, they see the value. They see the value as a niche thing that could could potentially grow, and they can definitely integrate into something like a virtual pro- platform for everybody. They are thinking of the internet. Thus, Vince Libera, if you're still sticking around, kind of answering your question. They are definitely thinking that they haven't come out and said that this is what they want to do because they still have to iron out the details. There's way too many deals in place right now with people like Sky and whatever. But do you think, just just putting it's it out gonna there, It's going to take until February or March of, of 2017 to close this deal officially. Yeah, and then and then the next three years that Bernie um, is going to stay there. Bernie's going to stay yeah. as a CEO, mm. but I know that like you may disagree with this, but I think that it's not that bad because you would be dumb and to, to get into F1 and fire Bernie right yeah, away. Yeah, there's that uh, transition period. Yeah. Whatever, I know. Yeah, and that's that's the transition period. But after that, with the, with, so with the leadership of Chase Carey that understands sports and understands like how to grow this, and um, with the involvement of David Saslov and John Malone, they're going to push this thing as, um, as a content. And they know that what you need for content distribution is scale. And what does that translate in? I cannot see it going any other way, but basically what we've been talking about. A worldwide distribution yeah. of F1 content and them like reaping all the benefits in terms of advertising and try to squeeze in like product placement, even doing what you said um, uh, with, uh, you know, like, like, like what UFC is doing and like bringing like, no, no, that's not UFC. yeah, but, uh, but no, but bringing like maybe some drivers and like giving them some roles in, in like other um, spheres outside of F1 in terms of advertising and all the rest, kind of like what he said that he admired uh, from Disney. They're talking about actually, like what they want, what John Malone want wants is to actually 
bring some serious competition into the world of the internet. He said, mm-hmm. he, like, he, he basically wants there to be a consolidated platform where people can watch, and this is what's gonna, this is how it's gonna start. And I'm, you know, this is great. It, it can only mean good things for the customer because if these guys are half as serious as they're boasting about. It's gonna be easy. Like yeah. this is, as far as uh, Bernie's been boasting. The biggest sport in the world with the most niche content availability in the world, which for some reason his fancy ass thinks that that's the best way to do it. If if it's hard to get, if it's like if it's really exclusive, that means that that means you you do like everyone wants that, blah blah blah. Like nobody's looking for it. It's not yeah. free anymore. <laughs> nobody's paying two hundred bucks a year that had it free before. Yeah. The super fans, only the super fans. Actually, the, the other day I was just scrolling through Reddit and like reading like some of the some of the comments uh, in a couple of the threads, and like somebody said something that like it's true man if you think about it it's true and he said that listen what 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 was wrong or like what is wrong still to this day is that many people like even within f1 do not like would hate for this to happen because their whole thing is that like their whole the whole way of living has developed around f1 being exclusive Mm. and being unavailable and being like sort of like a thing for like millionaires and whatever right the moment that that kind of stuff starts to decay Mm. then you know their whole lifestyle starts to decay fuck you i say to those people don't like you can't put yourself ahead of the sport even if you like and and i'm listen like i'm i'm talking about like that like down to like the bottom like down to like like from journalists to people that work within the teams like some people are genuinely scared that this might actually work and that this like you know that f1 will become a thing for the masses for like the great big masses because it would take some of the allure out of it and that's all they've known right that's all they've known since they've been right. to f1 and they like, you know like any sort of luxury and- good Right, where like Prada bags or like some sort of uh, but clothing F- line. But F one is not that. F one is no. entertainment, and for entertainment, yeah. and th- that's crucially what Liberty Group is, is trying to say is that, or what they've been trying to say is that entertainment is just intellectual property. Yeah. And eventually, if somebody, if the consumer wants your intellectual property, they'll come and seek it. If yeah. they don't, they don't. So you have to put it out there to just grab anybody to like to like monetize even like the the smallest interest. And that sort of is in line with what we had been saying before. You this know? is how we started the ten a weekend. We went through every sport and saw how many subscribers they had, how many views they had on YouTube, and how many videos they had, and the ratios between those mm-hmm. were insane. Like F one yeah. was nowhere near the no, nowhere near near the the game of online content. The lowest, shittiest contented sport online. I forget even what it was. It was like maybe. Formula E was the numbers were triple as a as a ratio to F1 like the smallest racing series right now. Final UFC uh, <laughs> mentioned here. Hey, okay. You can I'm talk just, about whatever you want, man. I know, but people don't like it, and it's not F1. But just the the comparison because of the sale that just happened. You look at their YouTube page; they have uh, it looks like fifty three or fifty four videos in the past week. Posted on their YouTube page, which is over, looks about eight or nine hours of content, all for free, all exclusive. Formula One's YouTube page in the last week, they have uh, six videos and it's about uh, 12 minutes of content. They haven't posted anything since two days ago about Felipe Massa's, Felipe Massa's proud career. Two minutes of content? What the hell is that? Garbage, garbage. Nothing about the sale. Nothing about the new owners, nothing about the old owners, nothing about... They should have done a 50-year history of what we just purchased, what we're going to see in the next 50 the, years. The Bernie, nothing. The, the, Ber- the Bernie Ecclestone story. Yeah. Like, anything, man. They done anything. Yeah, they just, they're so uncreative. And we can only hope that these people... Honestly, man, after hearing all that, and like and this is what I, what, I, like, what I realized, after finding all this out and that that is the mentality... The window is closed. I can only, th- I can only think that... What they're gonna be doing with F1 is gonna benefit the fans because the, yeah, I hope so. It's, it, 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 there's no way that if what you want to do is to ramp up your like online presses and to like ramp up like random access distribution of content, you can't do that without 
offering some sick features to the super fans. Yeah, we've been saying for the past year, like, we've done nothing but steal every race <laughs> for our whole lives. Allegedly. Yeah, when I, well, I guess when I used to VCR them, I guess that wasn't technically stealing because I record all the commercials too. Like, there were breaks in that that you had to watch. But that at the same time would be willing to pay for this some of this content man yeah. like the it would it's it, it's the it fight the, wrong the fighting league i can't talk about mm -hmm. eight bucks a month gives you access to triple what they have on youtube the entire history of the sport you go for in the f1 sense you should be able to watch every race every qualifying that's ever been recorded in history that's that's available <laughs> <laughs> So what do you so going forward? What yeah. do you what do you think? Like in okay, so I, I've seen like a lot of good things. Now let's do like a couple of like bad things that you think that could come out out of this sale. Yeah, I've, I have. I've been trying to be positive, man. I don't even. I don't even know. Um, I, I don't know. I, the, the, this guy Bernie's not going to get along somehow. But yeah, yeah, looks like legally this guy's got the upper hand you know what i think for now at least or whatever. you know what i think is, is it's gonna be like the negative thing is that there's gonna be a period in time of probably about three years when what's gonna happen is that everybody's gonna need some adjustment yeah and for sure. right and so many people are gonna start to like it, there's usually gonna be a lot of negative news coming here and there because eventually what, what if they carry this through to the full completion, there's going to be a lot of pissed off people because, for example, Sky is going to lose a lot of their hegemony, um, and so it's going to so it's going to piss off Sky, and Sky dominates especially, a lot of the of the opinion. Especially they were in the running to buy this whole sport. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, so Sky is going to be like all but heard about it, and they're probably going to start to generate some like stupid news so there's gonna be a lot of negativity coming out of this and like probably anything that they do is gonna be like looked down below and also because let's not forget they're american and a bunch of british people are not gonna sit around and be told what to do by a bunch of colonials so <laughs> <laughs> they, they just they just backed out they told europe to go fuck themselves never mind america oh yeah. my god so there's there's gonna be a lot of friction there at the beginning i'm sure of it but yeah, I'm sure everything that I've found out about these guys, they're going to fucking make it happen. Mm. And thank goodness for that. And you know what? Hi, welcome our new overlords. <laughs> sure. <Yes>. Why not? <laughs> Can't wait. Yes. We don't have to talk about the sale anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's all done. Yeah. So you have the, the details as they evolve. My glass is empty. Can't, yeah. Can't, I, got, I got a bit left. Oh, that's fine. illegal. You can't cheers an empty glass. <laughs> oh, I'm calling the cops, guys. <laughs> Jesus. He had, had a sip. He had a sip. I had a sip. It was delicious. Uh, should we take a little break and come back? Before we do, let's. Uh, this is not really related to the sale, but it's a bunch of legal stuff, and hopefully, we can have more fun in the second half. I'll just yes. let me get this. Do it. Sh this is a two-second story here because we had talked about in the last month or two. Remember mm -hmm. the Italian um, automobile club and the. Italian oh, Business is this association? Is this Imola stuff? Yeah. What, whatever that. Uh, Bring back Imola. Yeah, whatever the whole business was with the, <laughs> the club, Ital the Italia d'Automobile, whatever the fuck, and uh, the Monza or the Italian Business Association, whatever that was, yeah. passed a federal law that said nothing, no race in Italy could be called the Italian Grand Prix unless it was held at Monza. And then last week, we mentioned, because it was mentioned that the Monza Grand Prix had been extended that it was all but done. Don't worry about it. The contract is signed. This week, Imola has made a not it's filed a, a notice with the court to set up some sort of legal action to uh, go against that. They're gonna so try they, to like revert that. It's gonna revert that. Yeah, the, it's the contract for Monza has not been signed, which we were told it was from the news last week. I guess they thought it was, but it has not been signed. And Imola is saying that that whole agreement is illegal. So oh my God. it's going to take a long time. There's going to be like a t tentative event on the calendar again. Everyone everyone showed up at the race and cheered. and yeah. You know what I mean? They had a grand old time. Now they're going to be uh, all tentative about it again. They're going to meet in the court on October 26th. So I guess we'll let you know in a couple of weeks. Oh what the, the Six or seven more weeks from now. We'll come back to the story. 
But that's enough legal bullshit for today, I guess. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, we'll come back with uh, uh, the stories that came out of uh, the Italian Grand Prix. We we'll talk about that boring race and whatever massa leaving the sport and a bunch of a more silly season stuff and whatever. Let's do it. We'll come back, guys, in five minutes. Dude, I, don't have my headphones. I don't know if anybody, uh, if if anybody noticed, but uh, last week was uh, the Italian Grand Prix. Oh, was that what that was? That's what that was but... All that hype? Yeah, that's... we watched it together, and I barely yeah. noticed. Yeah, Jesus Christ! I would, like <laughs> I had I had way more fun talking to the other people that like were there watching. Oh, by the way, thank you, thanks to everybody that came out to uh, yet again to F one at Betty's to the new fun new and redesigned Betty's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's still upstairs at Betty's. We're still gonna keep doing these and uh, for the rest of the season. Uh, but yeah, if one of Betty's thing, you know, thanks to Dave showed up again. We had like a, a couple of like the of like Travis of like the our our, our core our, our, our core core, core group <laughs> showed up again. Yeah, excellent. The super thanks, fans, guys, the super fans. Uh, John Malone, <laughs> be proud of us. But but for sure, thanks to everybody that showed up to F1 and Betty's. The race wasn't great, but they can't all be hungry, I guess. Mm. Um, but uh, so, so, does anybody remember what actually happened in the race? Mm. Uh oh, I believe <laughs> Lewis. Oh, Lewis Hamilton Lewis fell back and then didn't pull, win. Pulled it off. He, he came back in win. second. He didn't win. That's that's. He dropped back to six. Came back to second. That's yeah. pretty, that's pretty good. He well, did that. Not as good as winning. Like you know, as much as the Sky Boys wanted that to happen. The crowd was great though, right? Lots yeah, of people showed huge, up. Huge man, it was huge. Apparently, that was one of the biggest last year too. I think attendance. Could, this was a stupid, every stupid year, headline man. in a new European paper. Still. Uh, 10% more people showed up, so they were extra concentrated on uh, increasing security to avert any terror activities. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up with it. Oh, my business. God. What I love. Okay, so I, I okay, put this, uh, uh, open a new, like, Chrome window and look for Lega Nord. L-E-G-A. Yeah. Space. N-O-R-D. Lega Nord. What is this? So, are you showing this? Looks, uh, a, yep. looks yeah. a bit like this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so looks like this guy with a pot leaf beside him. Especially this. A lot of people uh, saw this. The, the, there was a guy with a huge flag in the podium ceremony at Monza that had this the, this symbol in it. Then they all yelled 420 get... and rolled the joint? No. I saw this that. Is... I did see that. Yeah, yeah. I every... made a joint about marijuana. I made a joke <laughs> about marijuana. <laughs> yeah, no. What this is, if, in case anybody was wondering, this is the flag of the Lega Nord, which is the Italian separated. I was just going to say, movement. are they some sort of rebel group? They, no, no. They, they, <laughs> they want to they break up Italy into two parts. Security, the south man. Of Italy, keep, keep well, it. Keep what was security doing, man? They couldn't uh, even keep that yeah, flag up? No, no idea, man. Jesus. But, so they, they want to split the north of Italy because apparently Italy is like a divided country where the north is where the money is and the south is where the peasants live. Mm. So the north, the, the fucking, the, 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 the equivalent of Trump supporters in Italy, like this is their banner. This yeah. is like. Build a this wall is a, across. In, in, the, in, in, across in Italy, the center of Rome. This is like racing the fucking Confederate flag, like willy nilly. <laughs> and this is what was happening at the podium at Monza, in case anybody was wondering. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know those facts. <laughs> yeah. I was not aware. Ah, so you're a racist. Yes. So, but anyway, yes. Yeah, what an uneventful race. It was good to see Lewis come up uh, from the back, but we all knew that that was going to happen. We knew yeah. that the Ferrari yeah. had. You know, if anything, they probably like did like Vettel was probably pressing that like hundred percent button the yeah. entire race. Uh, Hundo P, Hundo P, <laughs> just you fucking. Are, you want to know a crazy fact about yeah. Lewis Hamilton? Yeah. This weekend, he became the driver with the most starts with a single manufacturer's engine ever. So Michael Schumacher, oh Michael Schumacher did a hundred eighty starts with a Ferrari engine. So he just uh, Hamilton's now got a one hundred eighty one on a Mercedes. Oh my god. Powered car. Yeah. Look at that. That's 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 Steve, impressive. One of those useless facts, but whatever. Right. No, that's still pretty cool, though. Good for him. Yeah. Hey, hearing, hey, hey, hang on a second. What, I'm, are, you, I'm what gonna, are you typing there? <laughs> I, I'm gonna uh, put. I, I, like, I, I'm gonna bring up another like useless cool, fact. interesting, interesting fact about uh, Lewis. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, because apparently, okay, apparently. Yeah, hang on a second. Let me just, let me just like. Put this pull this up here <laughs> i keep looking at yeah. nick's face here and he's like what the fuck is this guy talking about 
a second. Some of these names sound familiar. <laughs> okay. What the fuck is a Mercedes? What? Yeah. What is a Mercedes? <laughs> what is a Mercedes? What is it? <laughs> stripper you guys hang out with? Sometimes. <laughs> Shit, okay, I, I, I don't... Oh, wait, hang on a second. I, I think a Mercedes is like if you uh, erase three of those leaves from the separatist flag okay, here. and uh, paint it silver. So... There you go. We posted a tweet earlier uh, about how freaking, like, after last weekend... This, this is... I was watching uh, Peter Windsor's podcast, uh, like his little youtube thing that he does right oh, and he walk. was like he like selfies himself while he's driving around i think he has like a few like sure things like glued onto suction cups yeah, on whatever. his whatever yeah. yeah uh so <laughs> and he was like just basically saying how like oh my god like he he, he was like basically talking about how oh, how quickly the media turned around and like say that like all of a sudden lewis isn't working just because <laughs> you know just because nico won twice in a row da 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 etc etc He's <clears throat> got a clutch and, but I but everything that he said like he put out uh, three videos uh, <laughs> about about monster race even one one video was supposed to be about Ferrari um, but he brought up Lewis all over again and I was thinking mad like come on man like it's I know I get it like Lewis is a great driver and whatever but just because you're British you don't just need to be like fucking Lewis this <laughs> and like he's a Christ second coming and I and I commented that on like somebody else's thread on Reddit uh, under our uh, freaking account and this is what somebody like replied and like <laughs> you know you know how like <laughs> oh better put up my glasses you mean one of only two drivers on the grid to win three or more championships the only driver on the grid to win championships with two different teams one of only four drivers on the grid to beat a former world champion in the same machinery the only guy on the grid to beat alonso in the same car and the guy most likely to win this Comma, his fourth championship. You have to admit that Lewis is distinguished from his peers. Didn't stop a Van Dorn beat Alonso in the same car? Yes, oh it did. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably like one of the like. I, I, I'm. Uh, I appreciate all the references. Yeah, to that yeah right there. Yeah. And, and good on him. But I mean, like that is just like. How dare you? Yeah, like, yeah, okay. the, have you seen all these facts I've just listed? It's a, a, actually, it took, it took a few bags of Doritos to flock all those facts down. Throw out your sure. keyboard because it's covered in Dorito dust. That's not the point. The point is that like the the, the, the British media and we all love the. Okay, if you're getting enough into a form, I like Hamilton. I like him too. We man. do. We we all do. We <laughs> haven't said anything wrong about Hamilton ever. Just like tone it down, Dude. man. Like the yeah. other things the actually happened. Still waiting for the mixtape though. What the fuck. Yo, that's never gonna drop. Yo, Danny Rick might put that's one out it, before. Yeah, no. it, it dropped from heaven and it's going straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Monza. Uh, so uh, whatever, what the heck did everybody else did? Uh, uh, stories from the paddock of Monza, though. Yeah, uh, right. A plenty. Yeah, uh, Jensen Button, obviously. Okay, so uh, taking a sabbatical. Well, what, what, one of the stories was um, right at the first corner. Or, so or not whatever Jensen. I don't uh, no, not Jensen. Not, not about <laughs> Jensen. But we'll get to Jensen. <laughs> yeah. But one of the big stories is that right at the first corner, uh, there was like you know the three into one Max Verstappen with Kimi Ra- v Kimi Raikkonen v Vettel, right? Right. Everybody's talked about. It. Everybody has a fucking opinion on that. Uh, but one thing that I find that I, that I found interesting is because I didn't have time to really like, get into like a ton of F one this past weekend. I actually watched the post qualifying uh, press conference and the Thursday. With the drivers' press conference, I watched that after the race. Right? Oh, interesting. Right? And so, <laughs> one of the things was it that, like when you read a choose your own adventure and you read like afterwards and before, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. no, nah, yeah, fuck yeah. that, yeah, exactly, <laughs> something like that. And Vettel clearly, cause, so after qualifying, because uh, uh, Ferrari was uh, three four, Vettel got asked, like he 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 got asked. About the first corner, he 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 basically like so. Was, uh, one of one of the reporters was uh, said like, oh, you know, like you're starting beside uh, your teammate. Like, it, do you think this is gonna become a problem down the first corner? And he, this is what Vettel said. He's like, he was like, oh, you know, obviously, uh, with your teammate while going to the first corner, you try to make some concessions because you want both cars to to finish. And he gave, he gave the level-headed answer. Bullshit. 
He went careening straight into in, 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 into fucking Raikkonen because he thought that it was only Raikkonen that was there and he wanted to run him off the road. That's what he <laughs> admitted to doing after and that's why this whole thing... Yeah, I did it. But, but just the fucking nerve before the race saying, oh, no, 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 we're, we're teammates. Like, you know, it is in the best interest of the team for both cars to finish the race. <laughs> Bullshit. You're full of shit, Vettel. <laughs> I did the opposite this weekend. I had so much free time. Like on Friday, I set my alarm clock for 3.45 a.m. so I could watch the free practice. And I seriously hurt my jaw. Like it's th- that was last Friday. Uh, I might you actually I might still go see a doctor. Yeah, I got up. Right. I went to bed like still 11 or 12. Like whatever. Like a regular human being. On Thursday. Does. Yeah. <clears throat> and then Friday morning I woke. I set it for 3.45 and I was yawning so hard. My jaw popped on the right side. <laughs> Man, yesterday I, I had some hamburgers for dinner. I almost couldn't finish. I let the second one get cold, and it got harder. I could barely chew through it. Like, like, just blend it, man. Just put it in a blender. Yeah, it's it's, it's on do. the right, the right side only. A popped hamburger away. smoothie. Oh <laughs> it's been a whole week now. Tomorrow's Friday. My jaw hurts, man. Yeah, but just, just be glad there's no race this weekend. I don't come up with a cooler story than you fucked it up yawning. <laughs> you should have seen the I, other guy. I, that's my dedication. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously. So, uh, yes. So, buttons out of F1. Yeah, so is Massa. Sorry, we're losing some frames here, guys. Oh, my God. I, I'm sorry. Usually in the evening, for some reason, it always gives me a bit of trouble. Those motherfuckers coming back from work? Yeah. <laughs> All those people on those the... Those nine-to-fivers. Information superhighway cousin traffic. Jesus. Button is not actually leaving He's F1. Not, right. He's an ambassador? Massa is. Massa is. Yeah. Massa's seat... Well, we don't, let's talk about Massa's seat in a second. Button. Not leaving. He's still going to be associated with McLaren. Who's taking his seat? Sort of Stoffel Van Dorn. That's how, exciting. Right? Stoffel. Yeah, yeah. And F1 seat permanent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, because like... With yeah. maybe a resurgent McLaren, eh? Right, right. Well, because like mm-hmm. McLaren was coming back, right, with like a weird engine that they weren't really on top of. Mm-hmm. Had two veteran drivers coming yep. in. And that doesn't really leave a lot of room for growth, right? So yeah. like you bring someone new in to get their feet wet and and get them into the the paddock essentially, yeah. right? And I think that's great. I I love it. Fucking the guy, dude, he fucking had one job to do and he did it right. <laughs> he scored the first points for McLaren this uh, season, that's right? right? Yeah. And he read the entire fucking thick manual on how to operate the steering wheel on his flight from Japan overnight. Got in the car the next day and fucking killed it, right? So, Dude. buddy, like he yeah. he, needs, he knows he knows what's good. Come on, he's so he's got the seat and he had been threatening that if McLaren basically didn't give him that seat, he was gonna fuck off somewhere else. The opposite end of that spectrum. My dad got a smartphone like a year ago and he pocket dials me at least once a week still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least Charlie Whiting also stepping down. Of rumor, maybe Button can he's, step he's up. He's rumored to do. He's rumored. The, well, I think the rumors go a bit deeper because his contract ends this year. Mm-hmm. His contract was, I think, signed in '96 or some shit like that. Yeah. And uh, this past weekend, he was going around to all the teams and saying, "Hey, I want to looking for a job. You guys want to hire me?" Yeah. yeah, yeah so come it's, on. he's trying to. Yeah, come uh, on, I'm Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Who who wouldn't want to hire the race director to their team? Yeah, 100. You know? Get a little inside info. He knows all the details about everybody else, right? Yeah. Every every detail. Every single one. Every detail you know, that not, must be disclosed. Not only that, he's got that. No, in his not only that, but like he also has, um, he has a lot of experience in terms you of set like, up on that the, perch. The, 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 no, the, but the, the, yeah, the so, so so yeah, the over, regulation over the so, checkered line. You can't like if you have a person like so you typically have a person in your team and like uh, I think uh, in the preseason. Ted made a big deal about talking to whoever this person was at Toro Rosso that his whole job or like most of his job is to know what the rules are right like if every team yeah. has like a guy that knows whether or not something is going to be a the regulatory department yeah right yeah. keep up with Charlie that. Whitey made the rules yeah. <laughs> so he would be a, a definite asset to any team yeah. and he would know like he, he would know how, how are the stewards going to react to this how do you think that we what do you think that we can get away with loopholes that kind of shit. So That's his value. The big like sticker in the like him not getting re-signed or whatever is uh, Jean Tot wasn't the the president at the time that Charlie Whiting came in, and mm-hmm. now he is, and they're not buddies. 
So oh, he, of course. He won't, he won't Jean is a politician. He wants to bring another Frenchman in. Yeah. So yeah, they're not exactly buddies, and he will not extend or renew his contract. Well, because because Charlie does what Bernie tells him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a whole. It's good timing though, because uh, the purchase and all that. Oh yeah. So hopefully, maybe maybe Charlie can go to Liberty Media. A- anybody? <laughs> you know, he's gonna go hide, grow a mustache, and then <laughs> compete with those guys. Ingratiate himself to their team <laughs> with his mustache. Uh, <laughs> so what about uh, Carlos Slim? Well, that's what I was saying. Like, Force, and I, and Force Mexico? Yeah, if, if Fuerza, Fuerza, Fuerza Mexico. There was a rumor. It's not happening. No. But, well, <laughs> but fucking Sky and uh, taking over F1 was a rumor for a while. Mm-hmm. There might still be something to that. These people might not be completely out of the blue. He, he might still become like a, something like a principal uh, sponsor kind of to the team. And be, like if he's the one giving all the money, he's the one making the rules, let's be honest. At the, at the end of that line, Perez said, um, what's happening is what I always wanted and I'm happy. We'll find out before next week. Yeah, we'll do. We will. <laughs> uh, before mm-hmm. Singapore. The Massa seat. Mm. Could we talk about that? Yeah. Is there Felipe, anything coming out of that? Felipe Massa, yeah. after like enjoying a very successful career and coming so close to being world champion. So like so close, but he didn't. <laughs> it's one of like it is a, a like it, you couldn't make this shit up, Nick. Okay, you, so you don't. You, I told I told my friend who who he does this face every time I talk about F one. <laughs> I talk about F one, and uh, I showed him a clip of his retirement. They they did that whole they showed this yeah. whole story, and he's yeah. like, okay, <laughs> I get it. Okay, so uh, the championship was tight this one year. Uh, Two thousand eight. Yeah. Uh, and the financial collapse, <clears throat> right? Yeah. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. It was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> I never had any money to begin with. So. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, so it was the championship came down to the very last race. Okay, in between. So the way that you accumulate points in F1 is uh, where you end up in each race. And it's, it's, there's so many races a year and eventually whoever has more points becomes a champion than whoever says, you know, yeah. you know, then it goes down like that. And it had come down to the last race. And this is one of the things that's exciting. One of the last races of the year. And these two drivers, Lewis Hamilton and Felipe Massa, but we're basically in the contention. Oh, Buddy over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it had come down to the last race. Not only had it come down to the last race, is that the, that that race where it was all to play for Felipe Massa was actually like he was he was finishing second, but all he had to do he thought was finish for, so far ahead of this guy that then the, mathematically like everything would he'd uh, yeah he he'd have more points in the end, and by and when he finished the race when he crossed the finish line that situation happened mm-hmm. so like it would he he was he had enough points ahead of lewis that if he that if lewis okay. had who was further behind mm-hmm. if everything had ended the way the so if lewis had finished at the same spot that that he was at when he actually finished the race mm-hmm. he was a champion to the point that in the Ferrari garage, his his team Ferrari, like his family started like jumping so and making a big deal, and like buddy started crying. You know, there's what there was this whole thing. That, his dad was there, but <laughs> but then dad. but then Lewis was chasing the guy in front of him hard, n- like fighting to the very last corner. And at the very very last corner, the guy that he was chasing spun off, yeah. and Lewis overtook him, and that. Put the math in his favor, well, and then when awesome. Lewis, yeah, when Lewis ended, like twenty seconds later, after this guy, he was champion for twenty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then he was much. champion. So you just, we can't show this on the uh, podcast here, but this two thousand. One second, one second. There you go. So here's his dad. Here's him. He just came over the the checker the line. He's clapping. Oh, yeah, yeah, He's yeah, in yeah. Brazil. Oh, He's oh, crying. Yeah, yeah. This is oh, oh, yeah, he's in Brazil. He's in his home. In yeah. home country in Brazil. Oh, okay, well, that, that's all they showed. But yeah, his, his dad wife, was right? crying. Everybody. Lewis Hamilton. And then, and, then, and then they had to like, so after, like he was mid-celebration. 
at, and then Lewis did this thing and actually won the championship that year. And his his engineer had to be like, Felipe, 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 hang on, 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 hang on. No, sorry, Lewis overtook whoever. Uh, sorry, man. Who well, was that'll it? Ruin that, your whole day. Yeah. You know, that's that's, like, that'll ruin your like, life. Like life. <laughs> yeah. And after that, he actually never recovered. He never recovered from that. And maybe not because of he lost About skill Hamilton's or whatever. Or yes, what? correct. And then he, so yeah, there it, got, there it is. And he's won since then. Since right? then, three more. And here I, I can, or no, sorry, two more. Jeez, I'm, I'm talking as if he was already the champion, but he's I not. <laughs> no, no, no. If if he wins this year, he'll be his fourth championship. But it, so far, he's a triple world world champion. Yeah, look at this clip. I'm gonna Masa show him right now. Zero world champion. I put I set YouTube to one quarter speed. This is uh, Hungary 2009. Just yeah. So the next year after this, just he got hit in the head. So by watch. A you see, see that? Boom. Oh, you see that? Yeah. That came in. It's a spring that That's, came out of the transmission from the. Or sorry, I'll the show you in a second. Mike. Suspension of the of, of the car head. And then, so then, look at this. He's actually right going like 250 yeah. kilometers an hour. Boom! Whoa. Ended up in a coma. That put him in a coma. Oh my god! That spring hit him at about 250 kilometers an hour. Same dude. Yeah, that'll ruin your day too. Right? After that, Ferrari <laughs> though was gracious enough, and like the, in in what I perhaps think was one of Ferrari's noblest move, they actually kept him in the team for years after that. Even when he actually couldn't show up to like most of the races for the for the rest of this year. Uh, like so, basically, this this was this was halfway through the year, and he so oh my God. they just had to put somebody else in the car. But Ferrari still kept him on the payroll and gave him his job back uh, once he got better and like like you know nurtured him as a driver still and tried. They actually tried their best to like make him a good driver. But then Fernando Alonso came and etc. Et 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 Felipe is faster than you. No, Alonso. Yeah, Fernando. Alonso. Fernando. Uh, Fernando. Uh, Fernando is uh, faster. Uh, than you understand, you. Felipe? Anyway, <laughs> sad story. This guy's finally retired from F1. Zero championships. He's he's trying to like keep like a brave face on and like say that like he achieved his dreams and whatever. But Felipe, you know, you could have you could have done something. At the end of the day, it didn't happen. Sorry, bud. Next lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get a you get a you get an infinite amount of tries. Don't worry. Yeah. Reincarnate <laughs> as like an eagle or something. Or, or Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> just be uh, Lewis. Second place isn't so bad, you know? Fuck. No one remembers second place. I'd love to just sit in one of those cars. It wouldn't it be great? Yeah, just sit for a second. Yeah. He's like, he Fuck. already, like, being an F1 driver, he, you know, achieved his childhood dream. Yeah, yeah he did. I've never really felt 900 horsepower. No. <laughs> yeah, or close to 1,000 now. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Felipe well, leaves, and that Lee, that... Uh, that leaves a spot for Williams. That leaves a spot in Williams, which... If you look at the way that the championship, or sorry, that, that the cars are right now, and like who's dominant. So, yes, right now they're the fifth team down the line, but all the spots above all like the Williams seats have been filled and are con contractually locked for next year. Oh, really? So, they had the last seat that was, there was a question mark beside, uh, right? Who takes that seat? Mm. <sighs> <laughs> yes, we do. No, Buddy, no. we're talking about Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll can it, from Montreal. Lance oh, Stroll no has 30 million ready to go, ready to spend on an F1 seat and the talent to back him up. And if yeah, and he's winning the European for Formula F3 Three Championship, championship. He's, right now. He's, I think I think he's as killing about, it. He's mathematically guaranteed second place in the championship. He's killing it. He's yeah. killing for uh, European Formula Three. He doesn't the have to race the talent, rest of the season, and he's in second place. And he has thirty million to go, and he's already the Williams development driver. I see Lance Stroll there sitting, co sitting cozy, cozy in next year's car. You got in your Formula red, One. You get your red and white shirt on. You yeah. got your red shirt on. Did oh, my, did my right. notes in red today? <laughs> Oh, that's so exciting. We might see a Canadian, see the Canadian in F1. Flag. You can see the flag on the top of that car beside his name and number. Yeah. Yeah, for they're, sure. They're going to rename that goddamn island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Lens like, Stroll Island? That's sacrilege. <laughs> no, yeah, no. It's, it, yeah. No, they would never do that. Salut, Gilles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But no, seriously, we're gonna, don't make another island. <laughs> we're gonna make. We're gonna find. Like we, we might have a Canadian driver on the grid. Not only a Canadian driver, but a Canadian driver with like you know in the points, like in the midfield. Yeah. And Williams is not gonna sit pretty. Like they are actually one of like the teams with enough resources to actually make it back up. Mm. They could like this year. Maybe it was a blunder for them, and uh, they pretty much admitted like three races in that they had taken. Um, <sighs> 
Wrong turn in this Albuquerque. Is, this is the, uh, one of the one of the kind of shitty things, but also very interesting things in F one, is that right now in F one right now, you start the year knowing like a lot of like theory because you're not allowed to test your car other than like in the prescribed test. So so you design your car, you design and and these things take like so the teams right now are already not not just working on next year's car but the 2018 cars because Apparently, honda set up a whole second team to work on next year's engine oh yeah oh i know yeah <laughs> so because there's so many like things that could affect it yeah. but they can't test these cars that they're designing even two years out until they actually get the time allotted to them and williams this team that we're talking about um started this year with an idea and with like a design philosophy for their current car that they thought was going to give them an edge when it actually came to practice they realized that they fucked something up they miscalculated something and because reverting those changes is not very easy at all because even if you made like a miscalculation on a part this big yeah. that goes to the back of the car because everything is so streamlined to feed into that you can't just like just swap that out mm -hmm. because a little like a little like piece like this at the back of the car affects the way that the whole front wing looks so yeah and it's and it's money and it's time and it's, it's you know people's minds and time and whatever so they decided, or like whatever, they knew that like they had taken a wrong turn in the design philosophy early on, and this year they haven't been doing that good. But if they do well next year, they are a team with enough resources to do really well. That's the point. So not only do we have the opportunity or like the chance that a Canadian might end up in the grid next year, but he might end up with a half decent car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could, it could how be, exciting is that? It could be super cool. So, I put my arms up, and that means a lot. You know, okay. So, and and this is another one that I like, and this is why I think that it's it's credible. It's because the only other option, or whatever, like the only other name that has been floated, is Felipe Nasser. And to, Felipe to Williams, yes. Felipe Nasser's transition to Williams would actually be kind of, it would kind of make sense because, he, Massa leaving. Still like. Uh, leave some of the Brazilian sponsors in place at Williams, and everyone that works there wouldn't even really have to learn a new name, especially the British people, because they can't they can't pronounce the difference like, anyways. So, there's two drivers called Felipe Massa, the dude we just talked about who retired, yeah. and there's a young guy called Felipe Nazar. <laughs> but when when the British commentators always say it, they're like uh, Felipe Massa, Felipe Felipe Nasser. <laughs> You know how like, they pr the pronounce error as uh? Oh, <laughs> it's R as in uh. Yeah. It's M A S S A and N A S R. <laughs> two different names. There's also two guys named Nico. Uh, two guys called Sebastian. There's two Estebans. Two Sebastians. Yeah. Two Estebans. <laughs> Wait, yeah. who's who's the next Sebastian? I don't. Oh yeah, sorry, I, I fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's too many double names. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Somehow, somehow. So, but it, Felipe Nasser would make sense in terms of uh, Brazilian sponsorship, pronunciation, I mean, confusion. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and being and being number two to uh, to Bottas. But yeah, um, I think Stroll only just, if you just look at it in straight math, the numbers make sense, man. He has he has thirty million ready to go, but or one of the colonies. Yeah, but it just makes sense. It only makes sense. Well, actually, that is one thing that it, it where it might not make sense because, in terms of F one audiences, Brazil has way bigger share than Canada. Right. Yeah. We said this a while ago too. Uh, his dad, Lance Stroll's dad, at one point rented the entire Williams team for his son to drive the 2014 car. He rented yeah, yeah. out the whole team. He rented the whole mechanic body, yeah, yeah. their car, and a track. And, oh, he no, he's time. serious. He's serious about. Yeah, yeah. Push, yeah, his, no, push his son. He rented That's the it. thing. They're yeah. actually serious about it. And, he and has, Williams is he like, okay, money. yeah, you got the money. Let's do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll show up there with the car. Yeah. And the whole 15 guys to turn it on. Sweet. And if there was a Canadian driver, I bet you there'd be a lot more Canadians watching it. There's already a lot more Canadians watching it. Well, then. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thanks to yeah. us. Yeah. F1 at Betty's, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> hey, uh, actually, I, on, on that note, and actually absolutely not related to that note, but I want to... <laughs> I want to give a shout out because uh, we were we sat down um, yesterday, the day before, and we started looking at the numbers of like we hadn't done that in a while of like where our traffic is coming up, 
and we got a bunch of people from the Netherlands. Oh yeah, What's Netherlanders. It? Yo, yo, and and Norwegians. Yo, if you're in, yo Dutch yeah. and the Norwegians. If you didn't realize, you're like our biggest percent of viewers. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Thanks, ridiculous. guys. All those people are watching us right right now. Thanks, guys. It's kind of weird. F1 dads. I got one more weird story. Talk. Did you know that Jolene Palmer's dad was a Formula One driver? Yeah, he does. He was a Jonathan Palmer. Yeah. I didn't know. That's that. why yeah, they Jonathan keep Palmer. making such a big deal about it. But yeah, that's, I guess that's why he's always hanging out there and uh, he with his probably, arms crossed. He was probably just as good as Jolene Palmer. That's the thing. Yeah, he has uh, 88 starts <laughs> and one fastest lap, no other anything. <laughs> Zero podiums, zero wins, zero championships, 14 points, zero poles, one fastest lap, 83 to 89. He is offered to purchase Silverstone. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. He has written, uh, we've been talking about, (laughs) we've been following this for a while now because Jaguar, the international James Bond car manufacturer. No, 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 no. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the other one, uh, the, uh, Aston Martin. You're thinking of Aston Martin. The Jaguar is something else. But no, they made Bond cars before. No. Mm, are you no. sure? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, I don't uh, know so. uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Some long, <laughs> long British cars. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, they're they're, they're hey, per- ja- Jaguar Land Rover. That's like that's that's the company. The company yeah, is they're Jaguar American Land Rover. They're, they're now, right? No Indian. Indian. Yep. They're owned by Tata. Tata. Oh. Yeah. yeah. What do I know? <laughs> I knew that. Anyways, their, their 33 million pound bid was blocked by Porsche, as we mentioned, that because yeah. Porsche owns like a, like less than 10% of the circuit, like that, yeah. and they have something in their they contract. They have controlling shares, that's why. They have something in their contract that says there's a certain number of days a year that they get to have the circuit to themselves yeah. to do whatever they want, and nobody's allowed in. And that was the whole thing that stopped it. So Jonathan Palmer wrote a whole letter. It wasn't made public, so I couldn't uh, get any details, but he said he, he laid out his plan for the future. My son's going to race here or else. <laughs> that was his, uh, something like that. But he wants to buy the whole thing. But let's come on. It's, isn't it time that uh, the British start facing the music regarding Julian Palmer and how he's just not great? Well, and this is Jonathan Palmer. His dad, Jonathan Palmer, is the majority shareholder and CEO of a company called Motorsport Vision. Okay. Who owns Brands Hatch oh, okay. and four or five other major circuits in Britain. Like with their, yeah, like they're not F1 circuits. Yeah. Brand Hatch was that's the only one I wrote down because it was an F1 circuit. But yeah, they own a bunch of race circuits already, mm. so it might be legit. They could happen. He's still not gonna get his his son a seat, <laughs> no. if, if, whether he owns it or not. Sorry, just, Jolene. Yeah, it's, you it's not, you're not good, man. So jo- Jolene, I mean, dude, yeah, you're you're better than me, right? Like any, anybody that's in F1 is probably. Dude, I've seen you play the game, and I I'm, worry about you in the yeah, car. Yeah, I'm garbage, even right? as a oh, passenger. <laughs> the game Co- Code Master, Code Masters announced this week that that game is gonna come out on uh, Android and iPhones. What? Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god, that's retarded. Know, yeah, <laughs> You're gonna sit there like with your phone as your steering wheel, like. It's no. hard enough watching porn on those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you know what? Maybe they'll use it as like a rear view mirror, and like you just set it, you just set it above your head. It syncs up with your computer, and you're just driving. You just, oh, neat. You just keep on driving. <laughs> All right, and Singapore. I guess we'll talk about this next week. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. yeah, yeah we're uh let's have a um one second silence for the singapore sling anyway oh is it gone no, done that, that it was gone last year oh. i don't know but i'm gonna f- remember it forever <laughs> All right. yeah this is a tragic event uh alonso and hamilton's gonna try out the halo there's a little well this is mclaren's turn yeah it's the turn and wait wait hamilton. For, hamilton. For, for singapore for not in practice in oh. practice, in practice. In practice. Yeah. Oh, when, okay. whenever whenever they want i guess they'll run it yeah. hopefully nobody runs across the track again Buddy went to jail half a year last year. And the the Zika virus, though, that's the big concern. Oh, right. Mosquitoes. Yeah, that's that's oh. why you put the mosquito. Uh-huh. Yeah, Ros- Rosberg was uh, well, s- being a big fucking crybaby like he has Singapore. been. Well, he doesn't okay. want to bring his pixelated son. He has, p- p- so he to the I'm, I'm a family pull man up, now. I can't, go, I can't go to Singapore. Somebody got yeah. Zika there. Pull, pull up a picture of Marina Bay because Marina Bay is like one of like the most beautiful, crazy beautiful, yeah. How do you spell that? Place. Marina, M-A-R-I-N-A, Bay. bay. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Shit. It's one of like the most beautiful places in the world in terms of like human endeavor and like people build that shit. 
I, was, I went to maps. No, 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 no. Pull up a picture. Is this not it? Yes, it is, but pull up a picture <laughs> instead. Bay sounds like a place. Yeah, it is a place. It is. It is. It is. It's like, it's look at that. Look at that hotel there. Oh, I thought you were talking about a woman. No, 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 no. Do you see that hotel? I just heard it all. It's one of the most beautiful. I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> one of the most beautiful man-made. Like, okay, yeah. Nick. Nicholas, do you see that hotel there? Cool, cool. Oh, yeah. That looks like it's built to look like a there's ship. a cruise ship yeah. somehow got beached on top of the three buildings. From this here is to there, it's all an infinity pool. It's not as impressive. <laughs> they've, they've planned ahead for the next eight decades when global warming happens and the like, north and south poles yeah. melt that that's going to detach and float around the world forever <laughs> yeah that's that's what's going to happen anyway like it's like singapore is like filled it's with scenes crazy. like this it's, like, it's a crazy city and if you're the a night western, race all those lights they set up oh, oh yeah. my goodness but if, if you're a western viewer if you're a person like you you just Look up marina bay circuit always talking yeah if if you watch this race, it's and this is one of the things that like the FO media try to like really really hammer on is that it looks so nice here, but it's fucking hot and humid all the time. It's like Toronto right now always minimum is this, <laughs> and yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather die. And it's and it's actually in you don't see it there, but it's in the middle of the rainforest, and it's and it, it it's so fucked, man, that it, before they do the races and. The, the, the Singapore government hasn't ag- admitted to this, but they do. But before they do the race, because it always, like, rains, because it's the rainforest, they actually, like, go around on a plane around the country of Singapore and seed the clouds so that it rains <laughs> way before it hits the, the track. Yeah. Yeah, look at some photos, though, just, like, the aerial photos, the illuminated... Yeah, yeah look up, uh, yeah, Marina Bay Circuit at night or something. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, just look at that. Oh, yeah. Like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. The oh, yeah. Clothes. Yeah. So they race down there. That's where they're going. God Not this damn. weekend, but next weekend. It's going to be. It's always an exciting race. It's the most physically demanding race, uh, most drivers say, because of that. Like, the biggest so F1 you have. have potassium and silver iodide. They have a, a button. cloud seeding. All the drivers on the steering wheel that dispenses like this this liquid is it's not water it's like a it's like a gatorade powder basically so it's, it's, it's a protein it's slash like super electrolyte. coconut water yeah it's like got sugar and salt because and protein and juice sugar uh, on, on average during the duration of a race uh drivers in in just water weight they lose two kilos from the beginning oh, wow. of the race yeah like it's 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 an it's f1 is a, it's a crazy sport man but in this one because it's so hot uh, this newbie, uh, this rookie to F1, one year was describing how. No, his his so his tank of water. Something will happen, like some vent got locked or something. Like something happened, and he said that every time that he pushed uh, the water button, it was like hot tea pouring into his face. Because <laughs> <laughs> it gets so friendly. hot out there, man. Yeah, so it was. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a crazy race. It's coming up. I'm sure we'll talk more about it next week. Mm. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. DJ plays out. Hey, Alonso. That, oh, wait. that uh, fastest lap that he pulled. Oh, How cool was that, man? Honda's first since Ayrton Senna in 1992. That's oh, what I, could, I couldn't find a clip because they all got deleted from the internet because Bernie Ecclestone's an asshole. <laughs> Fernando <laughs> laughing his ass off about how ridiculous that was that he got the fastest lap. Yeah. That was pretty funny. That's it. Turn it off. Turn it off. See you guys. Hey, what's that in your hand, Nick?